It's a daily talk show, episode 401. I feel like I need to clap for some reason. We're into the 400s. And welcome, Jace, to the show. Jace Hello, Hawkins. boys. How Congratulations going, on 400. Mate, um, bit awkward. Uh, Dill, pass it over. Oh, there no, was um, You brought in wine for us to say celebration. Yeah. 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 And I uh, was oh. out on the weekend and I went to this place that was a, um, a wine, <laughs> it's a winery, right. it's an urban winery, and we were bottling our own wine. And I thought, fucking, I'll do you a daily, the daily talk show Did bottle. you do the branding there, too? Yeah, That's I know you've used a texter and just... <laughs> it was my wife. i got a five-year-old kid, it looks like that. Um, <laughs> if um, we're going to be brutally honest, yeah, we go. the we wine I bought out. in got sent to me. <laughs> And if we're to be brutally honest, I hadn't planned originally to give it to you. <laughs> no, so the in the way, I mean, thank you, boys. I thank mean, you. That is a very radio friend thing. Anything, especially tickets, you know that they're, you know, they're never actually. I was know. I was walking out of the station and I was like, oh, what's that? And they said, oh, because this company's been sending us like those little wine subscription things. Oh yeah. And a box rocked up, and I'm like, oh. Actually, I'll just crack it. And, I, and then I pulled a bottle of red out and then I went, hang on, I'll just check because it comes with a flyer of how much each bottle's worth. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I don't want to give them the most expensive ones. <laughs> I'm like, $30, that seems nice. No, that's a nice bottle. Yeah, well, th- there you go. Well, so the, congrats on... This blend is actually made on um, Ligon Street oh. in this winery that they have in this building where you can go and over the year you can mash the, you know, step, stomp on the grapes and then you can bottle it yourself. But you have to go throughout the year and yeah, do it. Yeah, you do the process. So you do the, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work, but you've got the, the version that, you know, just comes straight out. So And then you just whack a logo on it. I gave yeah. my sister a, um, remember when Julie Goodwin won MasterChef? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, bought, they sent out, I was doing radio on Brisbane at the time, and they sent out um, Julie Goodwin cookbooks. And I'm like, and this is just before Christmas. And I'm like, scored because I knew my older sister loved Julie Goodwin. And I didn't check the book and I gave it to her. And then on Christmas Day, <laughs> she opened it up and it said, DB105, thank you so much for all the ongoing support. <laughs> and thanks for supporting MasterChef. I was oh, like, that oh, is great. Awesome. So, Jace, you, you work, um, you're doing the breakfast show on Kiss. I yep. used to work in that same space. It's changed a bit. I just wish I had you guys, your team, when mm-hmm. I was there. It was a team that I had. Other than, actually, there were some great people. <laughs> It was just the on-air team, let's be honest. Yeah, it was you, all the behind. Went, yeah. I was working with Simon Baggs. Oh, yeah, Baggs. I'm sure you've Yeah, he's in Newey now. With. Yeah, we've had a few big nights. Sonia, who is now EP of yep. Kyle and Jackie O. So, I didn't know she was down. Yeah, yeah she right. was there. Ali Longhurst. So we, we had a great off-air team. The on-air team, I feel like you guys are a, a, a radio duo that actually like each other. <laughs> That's yeah. what I get. Yeah, I think everyone's pretty surprised that Paige and I. And look, you know what? I'll be honest. I think it is. A lot more common now that radio teams are actually being friends. Yeah. I think in the olden days, when I first got into radio and I moved to Sydney, so I was a Brisbane boy and then um, I started working with Kyle Sandlin's in Brisbane and then he moved to Sydney and I moved down with him. And I had to panel the breakfast show at two day and I was like, oh, so it's Wendy and Mooney and they're like, yep, but they hate each other and Mooney does it out of his house in Melbourne and they've been doing that for 10 years. And I was like, wow. And like... Um, I remember I'd be panelling the show and the producer would come in and they'd tell one person then they'd tell the other host. <laughs> oh. And I was like, wow, is this what it's like? So do you prioritise it then? When when you were starting to work with PJ, were you like, okay, we need to do, you know, every six weeks we need to go somewhere and have some form of like... I'd like an ISDN to be put into Bali. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we do. We genuinely get along. We're, um, we're very different people as an age gap and stuff, but we've sort of got a lot in common. Mm. Um, both families still together. She's got older brothers i've got three older sisters um both dads are currently going through cancer treatment like we've we're Mm. really different people Mm. but we have all this weird stuff in common and then she i started working with her in new zealand she's sort of just one of those people who doesn't like politics or get caught up in all the um fights and controlling stuff in radio and that was great for me because i used to be a control freak (laughs) so i realized if i did sort of become a control freak where all the team was yelling at each other she'd just shut down yeah so it purposely taught me where you just you can't be like that, otherwise you're going to get a shit show out of her, and it'd be my fault. So mm-hmm. you're not a, you're not a control freak anymore. No, not anymore. I've now surrounded ourselves in a team who like I really like, and then that's why when we got poached from New Zealand, I was like, we're not coming unless we can bring our team. Yeah. So we bought our EP, uh, a promotions guy. We bought this intern who'd only been with us for maybe six weeks, and you know when like you're working with someone in any industry and you're like you can see something in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know you know they're still green and everything, and I said to the bosses that like, he's green. 
but like we'd really like to bring him with us. And he was like, okay. So this intern's only been with us for like six weeks. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, we've got something to tell you after the show tonight. It's for your birthday. And he's like, oh, you guys take me out for free drinks? <laughs> like, no, it's not that. <laughs> and then we said, oh, we've been offered this job in Melbourne. We're going to go. And God love him. He's like, so you're recommending me for the fill-in here? And we're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you're coming with us. And you can't. Are we allowed to swear? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you can't fucking tell anyone. We've been sitting on this secret <laughs> yeah. for six months. So he's gone home. He's at home pacing around the house having an anxiety attack and he's ringing his car. I've got to tell my mum. I've never been from home. I've got to talk to someone about so it. So there was a mass yeah. exodus at the, the the radio station in New Zealand. Yeah, and what we did is we told our bosses in New Zealand, look, PJ and I are going, but we didn't want to say the whole team's <laughs> coming at that point. So every month, because it was about six months till we left, every <laughs> month we'd send another team member in. And then it got to probably two, three team members in. The boss was like, just let us know. <laughs> You're taking the Just whole let team, us prepare. You? You, know. you did um, the other week. Was it fifty? How many hours on air? Fifty-seven oh, did, or fifty-six? Uh, fifty-six hour on air. Uh-huh. Your think. voice was so oh, fucked. No. By the end, it was like I sounded like I had one of those machines. Like, yeah, oh, I got two hours ago. Um, we did it three times in New Zealand, and it just sort of became what the show was known for. We really yeah. liked it. Everyone was like, "Why are you doing it?" and I really liked that by 36 hours in, you just forgot all the rules of radio mm-hmm. of what you were taught and it probably became the most real radio you ever do. How yeah. much time did you have to use the dump button during those, those moments? Really? Okay. Once. And I didn't hit a, a panel op, did it? I was having a break and I was sitting on the other side of the desk so we had like a young panel op in yeah. and I said, fuck, and you should have seen his face. And I'm like, it was 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. If you were ever, you didn't have to dump then. That was the one time. God. But I you feel- just became real honest because, like, an interview would end mm. and the interview would leave the room. And you know how normally you wait and you're like, oh, God, that didn't go great. Yeah. You know, I probably won't <laughs> yeah, have them yeah, back yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, all right, thanks very much. And because we're still on the live stream, we're live streaming the whole thing, you'd forget. You'd just yeah. be like, well, that's the last time they're on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was, I think, the fa- my favourite bit of watching it was, like, you had the lavs on, like the lapel mics on or something. Yeah. And so it was the, the best moment. It's like watching Big Brother or something. It's like the best moments is when... You're forgetting to turn yeah. your pack off or whatever and you just hear, turn the fucking thing on mute. Yeah. Well, it came, uh, that came by accident. The first time we did it, we're like, okay, so we'll do 51 hours in New Zealand and we'll live stream it on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And maybe five minutes before we're about to go to air, because the plan was whenever we're in songs, mm. we'll just put the music to Facebook. And then we're like, oh, hang on, copyright. Yeah. They're yeah. going to pull the live mm-hmm. stream down. And we just, we'd realised five minutes to go. So we're like, we either don't do a live stream or we've got to leave the mics open for the whole 50 hours. Mm. And the shit thing was that with that was when you were playing songs, you couldn't have any music in the studio. So 57 hours, we, just oh, had, no. we, we had to cut the monitors. So when you're in a song, you're just sitting there in silence. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a lot of effort to put in. I feel like there's been shows that I've worked on, a lack of effort put in by the teams. I, I, I feel like if Josh and I had a radio show, mm. we'd, we'd want to do shit like you do, fucking sailing down the Yarra River yeah. in a giant... Yeah. Was it flamingo or ducky? Uh, it was like a, a rubber giant um, unicorn. Yeah, they brought out those giant <laughs> yeah, unicorns. And we're like, how cool. Let's celebrate first day of winter. <laughs> like a stupid idea because, God, it was cold. And George Calambardis drops a... Oh, that's right. Drops a... Um, Savlaki. Savlaki. Yeah, yeah, we put him on a bridge because he cancer. He was supposed to come on the boat. And then they're like, oh, George's... So, we, yeah, for anybody to know, we got this giant inflatable um, unicorn and then we just said, let's go where the tide takes us. And then we just went down the Yarra first day of winter and, yeah, George cancelled about coming on and we're like, that's fine. Can he go to a bridge and drop breakfast? <laughs> and it was just that big hero moment like, we'll tell you when to drop, three, two, and we're going onto the bridge and, yeah, he dropped and nailed it. But How much do you feel like a producer on the show? Um, fair bit. Yeah. Yeah, like I work pretty hard with our executive producer, Alex. Um, he's early 20s, old soul. You know those people that are just sort of an old soul. Mr. 97 yeah, is a bit like that. Definitely. Yeah, right. How do you – what is an old soul though? Like, I mean, you can work out – what what comprises an old soul for you? He's got more maturity than okay, I do. Okay, yeah, yeah. And he's de- like de- ten years younger. De- you know what I mean? Yeah, it's exactly de- what you yeah. are. Ten years yeah. younger than yeah. me. Yeah. You go, hey guys, here's an idea, and then they go, all right, come on, guys, we're grown ups. So like, right, old soul. Um, so yeah, like uh, him and I will work together on sort of everything, and then the broader team will get involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. And so from the going from New Zealand to Melbourne. Are you having to change much in regards to how you do a show? No, we're, we're pretty paranoid because we were doing drive over there and mm. we are just like, we don't want to conform to the breakfast radio model. Mm. Um, you know, Paige and I now say unofficially, our sort of show slogan is, um, you're not going to get smarter from listening to our show, but it's going to put you to great mood. 
Yeah. And we're really proud of that. You know, like we're not going to be the show that's going to be breaking the world news to you this morning. Mm. But, you know, the feeling drive shows try and give you on the way home, like, oh, forget about work. You know, the mm. day's done. That's what we're trying to do in the morning. Because mm. you said always <laughs> awkward. That was a tagline when you first came yeah, in. Yeah, we com- sort of comes had, up with we that? had that in New Zealand and then the marketing team really liked it and sort of pushed that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we sort of let them run with it. Yeah. And how much thought is going into that stuff? Like every single time there's a transition or a rebrand or a milestone, how much are you all over? They'll those bits? sort of they'll bring it to us and if there's any big red flags and hindsight's a beautiful thing. Mm. Sometimes you mm. sit there going, Oh God, you got us at a weak moment there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got us after three briefs, it was eleven thirty yeah. and you showed us a billboard shot and we're like, Yeah, yeah. we look great. Yeah. Um but yeah, like they're very they're very open to feedback and stuff. If we really like there's there was one ad they played us and Paige and I were just like, it's just too harsh. Like, mm-hmm. that's just not our brand. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we're not a Kyle and Jack's uh, shock jock show. And they didn't run the ad. Okay. So, and so you worked with Kyle, you said Brisbane. Uh, were you in Sydney with him? Yeah. So I was 18, finished school, got yeah. work experience at Triple M, mm-hmm. um, just answering the phones for free. I was doing that for about three, four months. And then Kyle took over the night show and... I did it for another seven months and then one night I fucked something up. He threw a city across the room to what the fuck are we paying you for? And I said, oh, no, I'm a volunteer. <laughs> and he had no idea. And half the people at the station thought I was paid to be there. Yeah. yeah. And so he went into the boss's office the next day and said, all my live read money and bonuses, pay that kid. Wow. And there was a couple of other people at the station that were like, yeah, he can have my bonuses too. And so the boss was like, all right, we'll start paying. So you ended up being the best paid person <laughs> well, in the no, no, The boss goes, I'm going to put you on 135 bucks a week. And I thought I won the lotto. Like 135 bucks when you've been working for nothing for oh, eight yeah. months. And so you got a, a nickname that was your old on-air name. Yeah, they started doing um, stunts with me. And then we just came up with the nickname The Lab Rat. Because, like, you know, science experiments and stuff. And God Love Radio. <laughs> a nickname... I think nicknames cut through quicker. Yeah. But the problem is trying to shake them oh, is yeah. just a fucking nightmare. Yeah. So we've got 3D Dill and Mr. 97. <laughs> yeah, jokes on you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy and George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they you, cut through better, but yeah. Yeah, you're stuck with yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, uh, at the moment, you're doing something about canteens. Yeah, we're looking for Melbourne's best school canteen. Mm. What I'm curious to know uh, what you're looking for, in particular, I feel like when I was in school, there was a transition from canteens or where you had all the awesome shitty food and now it's like... Health conscious. Yeah. Health. Yeah, but see, my kids' school, they call it the healthy hut. The healthy hut. Because it's 2019, oh, but you can still buy pies and stuff. Okay. So oh, I really? think it's more, it's give the illusion mm. where it's 2019, we're looking after you and everything, but yeah, you can still buy. But you can get like gluten-free options now. <laughs> They, oh, they do. Have to. Mate, they do an Italian day with Arancini balls, gelato. <laughs> gelato. Like some schools, my wife went to this private girls' school in Sydney and they didn't have a canteen, they had a cafeteria, uh, oh. cafe. Oh, no. <laughs> with a barista. And then it came out, I think, two years later that all the coffee was decaf, but they weren't telling oh. the students. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm drinking a decaf now and I can't tell if it's giving me a buzz or that's just like the taste they is triggering. No, I usually do. I ha- I've had one today, but I just thought I bought like decaf. Shitty decaf because I'm like, right. I just want to try and reduce. How many coffees do you have a day? Um, well, I go to my my in Richmond and he mm-hmm. opens at five o'clock. Yeah. And I'll have an espresso while I'm waiting. Yeah. And then I'll get a double shot cap. Is this always the been the way for you? Um, and then I'll probably have like two instants through the show and then that's it. Yeah. The, instants. Like yeah, just cheap instant coffee. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's what this the... is. Have you built out like a, is that your ritual? Like, and you have to stick to it every yeah. day. Yeah. I'll go down there or like we'll sort of take it in terms. Most of the time I'll go grab the coffees. Yeah, I'm a routine sort of guy. Why are radio stations so unhealthy? Like when I was, I was digital content at Fifa and Jules and I was the, so, sent so much shit. Yeah, oh, I was get, just like you're cupcakes, an 80K cakes, package plus everything, 10 kilos. Yeah, fuck, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was on stereo. Uh, yeah, no, I would have fucking, like every time MasterChef had a new season, you would have cupcakes or yeah. whatever. Giant crock and bush. Yeah, yeah. Fucking sent in at nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And you're like, oh, right, I'll have a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's the most unhealthy industry. Yeah. How do you celebrate like um, like I remember survey breaks and all that sort of thing. Didn't matter how we went, oh, we'd we, get Nando's. Well, we're not. This is inside. But when the surveys <laughs> came 
and it, the the people around us were like, "Don't talk to Matt Tilly about the survey. Yeah. He does. It's it's you know he can't he can't hear anything about it until he finishes the show." Mm-hmm. I was always like, "What a fucking idiot!" <laughs> Just and, like, Tommy but, didn't have a great relationship. No, with but I'm gathering. It was your time and kiss. Well, apart from the on air people, everyone's amazing. <laughs> but what do you what do you well, like? Yeah, we well, um for our survey we made a thing that um rather than the boss finding because they normally find out like at nine o'clock mm-hmm. and I think a lot of shows in the past it'd be like they'd just grab the host and take him into a room. And if it was a bad survey, they'd find that, you know, you've gone you've gone great with grocery buyers that wear red shirts. You're fucking oh. through the roof. But overall, you're terrible. Um, for us, we get the boss to come in at 9 o'clock, but we get the whole team in the room. Yeah. So we're like, if we find out we go down, they've done all the same hours that we've done, mm-hmm. so there's no point us finding out mm. in the room. Like, yeah. So, yeah, everyone's in there. Our promo guy, production, news reader, anybody that works on the show, we have them in the studio when we find out. And what's, what's your feeling like going into those days? Um, you know what? It's changed over the years. The old me used to really, really stress. Um, now, honestly, normally I can feel it. Mm -hmm. Like I reckon, you know, if the show feels a little off, then I've sort of prepared myself for, I don't know if we deserve Mm -hmm. a jump. What What does off mean? Because we talk about this, right? We go, I I don't, I don't listen to myself too much about how I felt about a certain show because Mm -hmm. we sometimes have got really great feedback about that specific show Mm -hmm. it didn't feel good to me doesn't mean that it was a bad show so how do you actually determine the feeling Uh, versus the fact um, i think you get to me i get a vibe like if people you're catching up with people and they're not going hey i heard that bit the other day Mm -hmm. or there's just not a lot of talk about what you're doing on the show or if i'm having a week or i'm driving home three or four days out of five going oh fuck we blew out there or that interview wasn't good or that stunt didn't go how i want like then there's just that feeling mm. and it's not just one show. It's like normally I might hit a two week patch mm. where I'll be like, Oh, and then I'll come out of it. But like when we just, uh, we just had a really good book recently and the stuff we did going into that was the 57 hour marathon and just the team were getting along really well. Mm-hmm. Ideas were mm. flowing. Um, we're going into holidays. No one was super cooked. Like everyone, if yeah. I said, Hey, holidays are canceled. Oh, we've all got to stay on. I don't think there would have been a mutiny. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, I mean, so, what about the on, online versus on air? Can you be killing it online but be doing bad on air, do you think? Um, yeah, I think I always feel for Em Rishiana when she did. She did two-day mm-hmm. breakfast for mm-hmm. a few years. And Em's got like a massive online following. Huge. Huge. Mm-hmm. And I think um, – it's very easy to fall into the trap of going, oh, this is working online, so it's going to work on air. I think the on-air audience is slower to catch on to something. To Everyone's fixed in their ways. Yeah. Everyone's so caught up in their way where, you know, online, you know, you can easily, you know, cruise around, change shows you mm-hmm. follow. So I think you got to be careful getting caught up in the online following. Mm-hmm. Well, because I think, like, I consume your show mainly through online. It's because you don't drive, mate. Yeah. And so the thing is that like this morning... You don't go home and just podcast the entire yeah, three-hour yeah, show. Yeah, no. <laughs> Commitment. <laughs> but the thing is... But I, you but, expect us to listen to you guys for an hour every fucking day now. <laughs> well, I think, but I think you guys do such a good job that you get a sense of... Like I'll dive in when you when I see something online, I'll then convert it and say, okay, but I want to go do that. I reckon that's why we got the show here in Melbourne because mm. I don't think anyone was uh, listening to our podcast or air-checking our show in New Zealand. I think it was purely that because we're doing video content and we're so selective about our socials. Like we'll probably do only one video a day and then we'll treat our the page. IG, the IG stories, I feel like you guys do a, a fair bit of content there. I guess maybe it's just because you've got it dialed in. Like I feel like a lot of – stations like i feel like whatever you guys are doing in the morning is reflected in the actual yeah content. sometimes otherwise we won't get caught up about like mm-hmm. i think last night's video it went up was maybe a week old okay it was purely because the last week we've had so much topical stuff mm-hmm. and then um friday show there wasn't anything amazing that was topical so mm-hmm. we we're like oh let's do one of the amazing videos we've had in the can for two weeks interesting so, so what's this what's the chat on snippets because we're always talking about we create all these names for different things we've got snippets we've got snips we've got like different lengths of bits and pieces <laughs> what's the um like are you guys sitting down at the end of the show saying i yep. fucking love that what's bit? This video? yeah this. or during the show we'll be like hey that's great for the story that's great for insta story put mm-hmm. that up um and then we'll decide one video a day purely for engagement we found that gets our engagement up if we treat it one video a day uh, we don't do much if any salesy stuff on our f- on our show facebook page we mm-hmm. treat it like netflix if you go to our 
show Instagram page, we don't want you having to go, oh, fucking meme, meme, yeah. photo of our lunch or yeah. us pissed at a pub. Oh, there's a funny video. Yeah. We just want you to go there mm. and see content. Yeah, Nothing but content. We've got them. If you get them once, whatever someone sees, that's why it's like doing teasers for stuff yeah. is a hard thing to do online. Like I, I struggle with the teaser thing for radio. I, I know yeah. it's a part of it. But I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen a tease work online. I just yeah. haven't. And I know a lot of the old school bosses are like, oh, you know, oh, what are you eating tomorrow? Blur it out and put up 710. Like, I wouldn't watch yeah. that and go, well, I'm listening tomorrow. Yeah. Post the video tomorrow night when you re- revealed yeah. what we're eating and well, just you, enjoy the content. If you got one chance to have someone's attention yeah. and that's all you got is the blurry photo of the pie, <laughs> yeah. that's a, a missed but opportunity. you might watch the video of us eating the pie and yeah. think, fuck, that's funny. I wonder what else they're doing. Mm-hmm. And then it's so easy just to get trapped in the social vortex and then you just start going through their old videos. Mm. Oh, definitely. How much do you think the radio listeners changed? <sighs> um, I think... I think everyone's just ADD now. Mm. Everyone's just so, so quick. I was listening to, I don't know the name. I was listening to someone talk on a podcast the other week about a Netflix format in the States. I don't know the name of it, but basically it's only recently started and it's worth quite a bit and it's not full shows. It's just snippets of shows. Yeah, oh, so, interesting. So it's targeted at people who, and my wife and I have this conversation all the time, it'll be 20 past eight, it'll be lying on the couch and we'll go, oh, what do you want to watch tonight? Oh, let's not start that show because we're not going to stay awake for a whole lap. Yeah. So people are lying in their bed and they go, Oh, Master Chef! I can watch it in four and a half minutes, and it's yeah, trendy, yeah, and, and it's yeah. all the shows or topical stories or viral videos, but everything is short. There's a book version of that. It's someone they've taken, you know, Gary V's book or Eckhart Tolle's yeah, book, sure. and, and they it's a thirty minute, the best bit. It's like the cliff notes. I mean, you'd be pissed if you're the author, wouldn't you? Oh, oh yeah. Well, You'd be it like, does. I want them to get the full context. When I heard about that, I was like, oh, editors, yeah. mining, all the work that goes into a TV show. Oh, and yeah. you're editing you're it down to three and a half minutes. <laughs> um, a friend of my wife's a teacher and she was saying um, she caught the kids the other day at school listening to a podcast on double the speed. Yeah. And she goes, how many of you do this? And they were year 11 students and 90% of the class. Yeah. It's tra- well, because I've noticed that I've started doing that more, specifically around audio books. And it does cha- it changes mm-hmm. it from – something to enjoy to just i need to consume like mm. a bit of a junkie but it's sad yeah. You, yeah you're looking at it from a numbers perspective if it's 30 minutes you can get it in 15 well I'll there's a gamification of the whole thing yeah. like especially i remember doing that with books that have just come out just being like it's just sort of a weird thing to think but i was like i wonder if i can be one of the first people in the to world finish to finish this audio book <laughs> there's, um, <What> a <laughs> there's a there's a there's a hack on max which i remember in 2012 you could do it's like a command and it brings up only trailers. Wow. What, can you look it up? So on Mac computers, there's a command and it brings up like a trailer section so you can browse through trailers oh, interesting. Of, of all the latest movies. Well, I find like with YouTube on the TV, I've like stopped doing that because I even sent you a screen grab of what my Sunday viewing oh, yeah. looked like. That was sad. Uh, yeah, I can just get it. I was checking <laughs> out all of all of your stuff. Like, well, I can just go. It's so easy to click through, like especially when it's on a TV. I could get three hours in an evening oh, yeah. of just like going through and yeah. being like, oh, what's being recommended to me? I'll click yeah. through but that. Yeah, Andrew Schultz, who's a US comedian, was trying to make it and get a Netflix and original. He's like, fuck it, I'm going to film my own original and then mm-hmm. I'm going to sell it in. No one watched it. No one wanted it. But then he cut it all up and he said his viewing time for his stand-up, like people were watching two hours back to back of clips that he was snippets that he was yeah. putting up, but no one would watch more than 20 minutes on Netflix. And that's what Netflix said to him. Yeah. No one's watching more than 20, 30 minutes of special. So do a shorter one. But how many videos do you watch where if you go, Oh, I'll watch that. And then when it loads up, like, I know about you, but I will look at how long it's about to go. And if yeah. I go two and a half, I'm like, Oh yeah, this yeah, is like, the time. I'm almost 20% checked out. I mean, I'm, I'm on a video then swiping to see the comments. So I'm listening to the video, but oh, then reading comments. So you won't even see the footage. So it depends. I'll watch the first little bit and then I start just getting into the comments section. Cause it's always where the funny shit's going yeah. on. Uh, <laughs> this is a loaded question. Why are radio stations so shit at YouTube? Do you think? Because they want all the content housed on their mm. Website. It hasn't changed. Or, I remember I was stereo. It was like mm. Uyala. Like upload, make sure you upload it to Uyala. What is that? Mean? Uyala was like, I think it was bought by Telstra. It was like so they could do their pre rolls and uh, shit okay. like that. Oh, on there's it. so much. There's so many like platforms and stuff. <laughs> I've I've sold over my career where I'm like, okay, and we're not hosting the videos over there <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah. And now we're over here. Make sure you upload to Wonky Do. <laughs> yeah. You know, the fucking new Australian startup, Wonky Do. But we'll go. We spend a lot of the time 
or like once a year, every six months, we'll sit down and really go through our video stats mm. and be like, okay, drop offs, thirty seconds in. Mm-hmm. So like, we'll really look mm. at our videos and be like, nothing over sixty seconds unless it's amazing. Is there still a push for people to go to the website? Like I remember back in the we day, it was anymore. like, yeah, no, no one will. Yeah, and do you? I'm curious, like your digital content producer. I remember when I was working on Fifi and Jules, it was like fifty percent that and fifty percent the dirt. And have to write these fucking no, dumb so articles. Got, no, so we've got someone else yeah. that's doing a new guy called Jacob. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, the way he's doing that, but he's just moved down from Brisbane. He's a good guy. So he, it's like, it's a perfect job to get into. Is it, it. A convers- is it a conversation though, where it's like, are you having to say to the CD or someone, like, we need someone full time working on the show? Or does that no, not we've have got to come? No, we've got our own video guy okay. full time. And that works from day show, one. From day one. Oh, that's mm. good. Yeah. So yeah. actually, I think a lot of the stations have gone that way now mm-hmm. where they'll have separate people who are sort of operated by not necessarily um, content, yeah. but more, you know, video. Mm-hmm. And then they'll be responsible for just doing the website articles. But most shows now have a dedicated video person. Josh, you and I, we're in the clickbait era. Like the the, yeah. the yeah. real yeah. thick. It was of like it 2012. Where, yeah. It was like pixelating stuff. Click. Through. It was when Facebook actually you had reach on Facebook organically. Yeah. And, and they'd and be so, like, put 10 seconds of the video on Facebook, uh, yeah. and the last bit will be like, now go to the website yeah. to watch. And no one's yeah. going to do it. The best bit about it was that Uyala at the beginning wouldn't load properly in <laughs> mobile, so everyone would click on Facebook, and then. <laughs> Was and right. then you'd sit through a thirty-second Nando's ad because <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, you can watch yeah. the video. I think it was the pre. It was the pre-roll video. Yeah. It was fucking up the rest of it, but they needed the pre-roll. I think as much as they'd love stuff just hosted on their website, mm-hmm. I think radio stations have realised now if you're not just putting the videos up on social, you're not going to get the attention. Yeah, I mean, does that mean from a financial point of view, it's going to get tougher? Like, I guess that they saw that as a a way of monetizing the content. Yeah. How do you think? How do you think the daily talk show without having a radio station, without having a sales team, what do you think out if, if we're doing this seven days a week for the next, you know, eight and a half years, what does that look like for us? Do you think in well, making money? I remember, um, Hey Manette, cause they owned all their videos. Mm-hmm. Um, they obviously did their own sales deal with, I think it was like big M milk. Yeah. Or something dare like. ice coffee. Yeah, it was dare ice yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so they just put the dare ice coffee mm-hmm. little logo yeah. and sort of tease bit at the start of every video. Mm-hmm. So they sold, Hey, you own all the videos for 12 months or yeah. whatever. Have you, has that ever been a conversation? I remember H and A being one of those first ones where it's like, remember at the radio station, they'd be like, Oh, we can't post anything like H and A control all, all that sort of stuff. And I feel like, the radio stations start to realise if we don't own some of that yeah. talent content, we don't actually really own anything. Like we own um, all our socials, mm-hmm. Paige and I, um, and then so uh, we get say if they want to post something on the Jason PJ Instagram page, um, we've like us and them have to be in agreement to it. Mm. Yeah, that's I, why. I great. just can't. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's outrageous to think that uh, radio shows like breakfast shows will change the RSS feed from one. Like, say, if you've got like a new breakfast show. Mm. You just you. I get that you would want to use the existing one that you have, but if you go oh, to any work. breakfast it show, if you go to any breakfast show that's changed, yeah, heaps of one star because you've literally yeah. just changed the whole show for the yeah. listener. It's like, oh, cool! I get to inherit the fifty thousand followers that the old yeah. show have. Yeah. But guess what? The fifty thousand followers are going to fucking hate me because yeah. I'm not the yeah. old show. Well, we've talked about radio stations being that you know they have their own audience. Fox, Kiss, we mm-hmm. they've all got a specific audience, and you come in as talent, the show and are now speaking to an existing audience. Yeah. So they know the demograph, you know, yeah. time it spent listening, but then you guys also need to connect with them. You've left an uh, audience in New Zealand. What was the learning coming to essentially someone else's audience where you had to? We said at 8.10 the first day, give us a go. Yeah. Like we just, we're, we're really honest. We're like anyone that's listening to the show now um, – was listening because it was the old team. Yeah. yeah. So we just said uh, we got on ten past eight. I think we did at six as well. Mm. Um, wasn't our decision to replace the show. Please don't mm. blame us. Give us a go. You might like us. You might hate us. But you know this is a really big deal for us. We're excited to be here. You know, give us a go. It's full on, isn't it? To think mm. about like that process. It almost reminds me. There's a lot of comedians that won't <clears throat> do corporate gigs because like it's not their audience, and essentially going into a breakfast time slot is like going to a corporate gig where it's yeah. like you're having to win over a crowd that isn't actually going to see you. Well, yeah. I think it, when you, like for us, building an audience from scratch, you start zero, it's Josh and I, mm-hmm. and we don't know how to articulate 
to an audience because there's no one there to speak to, right? So mm -hmm. we we just talked to each other and we committed to building up that relationship. But then it starts to make more sense when you start to see people engaging and like mm. putting faces to it. What's what's the learning the coolest for you? Starting at the bottom though, when you're when you're starting with no audience, you know anybody that's joining you is liking yeah. the content. Yeah. Otherwise they're not joining. Yeah. Compared to taking over a radio show where no matter what it was rating, there was an audience there. Mm -hmm. um, our job at the start is not to lose them mm -hmm. and then build on it. But I think it's inevitable you'd lose some because yeah. you're not for everybody. Yeah. That's no. okay. But you're the platform of radio is for everybody. That's mm. almost what they're I doing. Mean, you I almost, mean, you have two levels. You've got the radio brand filters and then you've got your show brand filters. Yeah. How much time do you spend trying to align or picking ones where it's like these, what made you a kiss show? Do you think? Um, we're definitely not as, I think the brand kiss in Melbourne is different to say kiss in Sydney. We're not as Hollywood. Mm -hmm. We're not as showy. Mm -hmm. Like when we signed on, we're like, guys, we're not, Kyle and Jack, Breakfast with the Stars. Paige and I are fucking terrible with celebrities. <laughs> we don't go to events where I, I remember we're in uh, You're Vegas. really radio people. Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel well, like that. Like... Just radio people who, like, if we get invited to an event, firstly, we just go, yes, free booze, or like, and then we'll go, awkward conversation. Oh, no. What are we going to wear? Yeah, yeah. We're not that crowd. I think we're in Vegas for the iHeart Festival a few years back, and uh, Tovlo came along, yeah. a singer, and I thought that was the record rep. Yeah. So I said, we're going to pass on the interview. Thank yeah. you. But I thought it was a rep. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. We're gonna pass. On her. Um, uh, yeah, I, we're just, we're, we're not that sort of show. And we're really upfront with them. And, and to their credit, they've, they said, look, we'll back that. And obviously in the back of my mind, I'm like, Oh God, yeah. Radio stations say that. And mm -hmm. then as soon as they get you there, they're like, okay, cool. We're going to get you a makeover. And you know, yeah. we've got Tom Cruise booked for show number one. Um, but they've been really good. Mm. They haven't, you know, and, no doubt, because it's taken us a while to start getting ratings. No doubt there would have been meetings where they'd be chomping at the bit to get involved, but they haven't. What's the importance of news? Like, because you hear about breakfast shows, it's like when people get their news. Do you have to, how do you go from being a drive show and then having to deal with like, if some, some there's, if there's a fucking terrorist attack or something happens and all of a sudden you're in, you know, you're behind the microphone? Uh, look, people will disagree with this, but Paige and I have said, unless we feel connected to it or genuinely have an opinion, we're not going to hit the mm -hmm. topic. Yeah. We're not going to hit it so we can go, cool, that was the biggest story today. The mayor wants to, you know, rip up Burke Street. Mm -hmm. If I don't give a shit about it and Peach mm -hmm. doesn't have an angle, why go 17? What's your favourite street in Melbourne? Mm -hmm. Like, just to tick the box. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Like the news... And touch what at this point, we're yeah. getting away with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah. if, you know, if something big happens, through... like I remember seeing, like I watched a doco the other night, which was like radios response to 9-11 and had all grabs from New York oh, yeah. and how they were doing it. It's like, I guess at that point, everyone has to, if it's, it's like, like how it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Stern, all that, like they're having to, how do you think that you would, how, what's the brand filter? How would you guys do it differently? Do you we think? normally, if an idea comes up, we'll go, okay, that's the radio way to do it. And then we get so turned off by doing it that mm -hmm. way mm. that we'll just stay in the room until we come up with a way that's totally different. Yeah. And not different for the sake of being different, but just Paige and I just, just we just so get turned off by doing things the predictable radio way. Yeah, I mean, one of the big predictable ones that Tommy talks about because he's spent a bit of time in Shepparton and um, being it, on air, mm, not in jail, is it? Yeah. There's a jail <laughs> just outside there. But the um, having to like being a duo and having to play the other opinion on something. So it's like you've got a topic, you got to take one side, you got to take yeah, the other. Yeah, but even that, like, like and. Paige and I were only talking about this the other day. We we're like, oh, do we hit it? Because we both believe that. And I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. Mm. That that happens in a conversation. You guys yeah, might yeah, have yeah, exactly. the exact same opinion about the issue. It doesn't mean you won't discuss the issue. Mm -hmm. I think just that's such an old school way of thinking. Yeah. And I still come across some old school programmers where it's like, guys, it's okay. We can have the same opinion. Mm. Debbie in her car might not have that opinion. Yeah. So then Debbie will probably ring more. Yeah. Have you ever said anything on air that you've change your mind about, but then actually felt like you needed to address it? Um, oh, there was something recent. Uh, what was it that at the time I didn't? Oh, this is going to do my head in. But anyway, I've changed my opinion on that topic. I'll, I'll remember it after. Pineapple on a pizza. Um, 
Look, we don't want to do it in the fridge. It was in the fridge. I fucked up. I meant barbecue. I mean, this guy puts peanut butter in the fridge. Yeah, that's outrageous. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. But I've wanted to correct my thoughts on it. Um and I will, but I'll wait for the topic to genuinely come up in yeah. the news again. Yeah. And it'll do my head in. I'll, I'll remember it later. I mean, you, are you not, are you putting your opinion out there? Do you think? Like, I think, you, I think the older I'm getting in radio, the more, like this is probably the real, uh, the most real radio I've done. Mm-hmm. Just because I, Paige and I have a great relationship. We trust each other. Um, because I trust her, she knows parts and I'm happy to take the piss out. Like, um, like I'm thinning. Right, my hair's thinning. I started taking the club. balding pills, which I'll write down oh, for really? you. Oh, really? What are um, they? <laughs> I went to Ashley and Martin and paid Do they like, give you a fucking hairy back or oh, some shit? No, I went to Ashley and Martin like a few years back in New Zealand. It was like two grand. I'm like, cool, no one's going to know about this. And because I was just starting out there. So Paige and I didn't have that really close relationship. And then one night she babysat my kids and she <laughs> saw balding pills on the counter and she didn't bring it up. Oh, no. But maybe like... You know, a, a while after that, but by that point, we'd formed such a good relationship, yeah. and we're arguing about something one day. And she goes, Why don't you on balding pills? This is on the show, <laughs> but I didn't get offended because I was shocked. I thought, Fuck it, Kudos <laughs> to you. The radio part of me was like, Good for you, you saved that right for the right bit. Um, but because I trusted her and I was in such a really good place in the radio show, mm-hmm. it was something that normally I was so freaked out about and mm-hmm. had, you know, and was embarrassed about that I started talking about it, yeah. So I think as I've um, as I've spent more years in radio, and when you find the right host where you feel comfortable and you trust them, I think then you talk about mm. more stuff. Well, and now it's a running joke, you know. Yeah. I mean, people. Do you can still take them, by the way? <laughs> I just started last week again. Really? Did, did they, they work? Well, what does it do? No, it did. It thickened it. So you got to take a vitamin and this little quarter of a tablet every morning, and then you put drops on at night. Are you an ambassador or something? No, 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 here's, no the th- here's the thing. Then I ran out of the tablets. So I'm like, I'm not going back to Ashley Martin spending like, you know, two grand. And then I was at a doctor's one day and I was talking to him about it. And he goes, oh, I know the tablets. I can prescribe them for you. And here's the drops. You can just get them over Like the a counter. generic version of yeah. it. Yeah. So really? I just got them from the doctor. And so what's the, what are they actually doing? Well, they can cause um, low sex drive. Okay. Which sure. they haven't they done haven't. for me. Yeah, okay. I know other guys that it's ruined their sex drive for them. So they've gone, screw it. I want to have sex. So I'm going to be poor. <laughs> and they've given up. Interesting. Um, but yeah, it does like it regrows the hair. And then the tablet you're having stops the hair from falling out. Is it is it chemical or is it like a natural occurring vitamin? No, there it? is a chemical to it. Um any side effects? No, I haven't I haven't felt any. No. Ask me in a few yeah. years. Well, though. I actually bought tablets online once. So like I was I was reading this was before <laughs> the it was dark web. Yeah, yeah, no, it was it's before I knew that it was like before it was like commonplace that you would get scammed for tab like those sort of things, but it was I sort of read this Men's Health article that said Hugh Jackman used this combination of Garcinia cambogia, which is like a Indonesian fruit. Uh, I mean, he's, that, done, he's done more live reads for this thing <laughs> than anything. I've mentioned it a few times, <laughs> and a thing called Testo Strong, which was like testosterone, and so I bought heaps of them. What did it do to you? Well, I read. Uh, like I read the bodybuilder, d- yeah, the, bo- <laughs> <laughs> the bodybuilder dot com forum, and someone said there was literally only one mention of Testo Strong, and it said um, the only thing Testo Strong will give you is an erection. <laughs> so I I didn't bother. We're um, taking one of our. But I had so many of them because the way they do it is it's like you have to buy it in bulk. Yeah, you buy it in bulk, <laughs> you get a good discount. So I had fucking four of each. One of our arcs okay. that we're going to get off the ground at some point is um, testing who has the highest level of testosterone in the room. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. And so we've got to get a blood test and we're going to fight it out between the yeah. four of us. We're going to check for everything else as well. <laughs> I think I've got low iron. So. I want to put the whole team on Viagra a few years back in New Zealand and then just do the old Seinfeld comp, who can hold out. <laughs> is there anything you've done because the times have changed? Oh, you've yeah. been in the you've been in the game for a while. Yeah. Is there anything you you wouldn't ever do again? Well, you yeah. were around the time you would have had a you would have been at Oz Stereo when they banned prank calls for a bit. Yeah, so when all that went down, I was in B105? Brisbane breakfast, yeah. and it was just after that that the job in New Zealand sort of came up. And I'll be honest, it was a fucking scary time to be in mm. radio mm-hmm. in Australia. Like yeah. you were watching everything you did. Everyone was watching, just waiting for you to slip up. So that was part of why I was like, you know what? It's Bit full on. I'm just going to go to New Zealand. When I went to New Zealand, mate, there is no rules there. Really? Like none. I was like, oh, I should really sit the radio codes meeting. And they're like, oh, we'll get you the flyer. 
And it was like, <laughs> you only go to SeaWorld and they tell you what type of ski shows on. And I've opened the flyer and it was like, you know, the speech bubble. And it'd be someone saying, drugs. And it just put a big red X through it. And it'd be like, don't plug drugs, booze. And um, no delay. Really? No straight, delay. There's, straight out. There's a team over there called the ACC um, and they call the cricket commentary. Mm-hmm. And it's broadcast on iHeart Radio. So mm-hmm. it's not on radio, it's on iHeart. So it's digital. They get away with it a lot more. But when I went over there, it was like, the Black Caps were playing and I walked past our boss's office and I'm like, oh, what's wrong? And she goes, I'm listening to the ACC. Um, They've hit rain, so they've stopped play. And I'm like, yeah, right, what's wrong? She goes, oh, they're playing prescription pill roulette (laughs) where they get out of bowl. (laughs) And and the show's really funny because they've got that dry sense of humour. They laugh a lot, but they're like, all right, fellas, you know, rain play. I was out in the middle, prescription pull the roulette, and that all pull out whatever they're on at the moment, like or just in their life, and they'd say what it is, and you'd hear them drop it in the bowl, and then they'd rattle the bowl, and everyone would take one. That's great. And then they'd keep calling the cricket, the and then maybe half an hour later, you'd hear one of them go, "He's out," and I can't feel my legs. And then, and then they honestly meant it, and then they'd keep going. That's so funny. Yeah. What What were some of the riskier stuff that you've um, done? I. Dearly Deported was, in hindsight, just this harsh asshole thing I came up with in Brisbane years ago and I think a couple of the other stations did around the network where we found someone whose mum or loved one is overseas Mm -hmm. and then we would fly them back and you'd pull back the curtain and be like, there there she is, your Mm -hmm. girlfriend you haven't seen in five years. We're going to ask you one question. If you get it right about your relationship, she'll stay for an hour. You get the second one right, a day, Mm -hmm. third one right, she'll stay as long as you want. You get them all wrong, curtain shuts. And they have to go back. They have to go back. That's so good. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> and so how did it, how did it end? Oh, you never want them getting all three right. You yeah. Know? So most of the time it was like you want them getting like one right so that yeah, way they've got an hour. an hour. You want them winning at about eight so then nine o'clock they have to say goodbye in the show. That's outrageous. I mean, how do people reach out like... Uh, and that was like... But, I was, but yeah. when you're young, you don't care. And you yeah, go, oh, yeah. edgy radio, how That's good's funny, that? Yeah. And you drive home in your car going, oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> what a funny day. And these poor fucking people are in tears. Yeah. You know, and I, I think radio's changed a lot now. Mm-hmm. It's like the it's a master chef era, a lot more feel good. Yeah. You know, that's why I think Lego Masters work so well this year. Mm. There's so much like married at first sight and all that shit. And then when Lego Masters came on, it was like, oh, isn't this nice? Just a show where no one's trying to root each other, mm. or and yeah. it's probably why Ninja Warrior works too. Yeah. Is it a challenge creatively to not sort of go? Down those paths? Um, not for us because we're just not that sort of show. Yeah, yeah. We, we love the brand Cheeky Not Nasty. Yeah. Yeah, no. I like that. I mean, you're sending out um, drivers to go and get pies from country yeah. country mm. uh, bakeries. That, yeah, was, that was so great. Like, funny. there was a bakery, oh, was it two hours? Something like that, just down in Melbourne. And they got a water best pie. And we're like, okay, well, who will go and get it? And I think someone said, oh, we've got to pay this listener who's going to go and get it. And I'm like, well, we don't, we don't have to pay them because they want to be yeah. a part of the adventure yeah. we can be cheeky we can say come on barry you're taking too long he got the wrong pie we can give us sh- give him shit about it we're not being nasty because he signed up for the adventure we're mm-hmm. just being a little bit cheeky mm-hmm. i mean what's been uh your favorite story arc that you've done of all time i love the marathon shows yeah to me the marathon shows are the best way to bring the station together because mm-hmm. you're on a 57 hours Every team works on the show. We normally get an Airbnb near the station. So if you finish the shift or not working, teams are going and sleeping at the house Mm -hmm. and then they're swapping and they're waking each other up. It's okay, you're on and people go. Like it's just, it's the best morale boosting exercise to do. Is it just tempting to do it all the time then? No, because Paige hates it. (laughs) And then PJ for a month afterwards because she's a health freak. Just exhausted. We'll be like, oh, God, my heart's. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to die. Yeah. I think I've got long-term effects. You had a doctor there? Yeah, you're... so we did doctor checks, I think, from about the 12, 13-hour mark. We went and get full medical, got full medicals leading up to it. We had the most amount of testosterone, although well, I didn't <laughs> test for that. I think, you know what, I actually think it's the healthiest three days of my life <laughs> that year because we don't drink any coffee. Um, no sugar foods, no junk food. This is beforehand? This no, is during. During? We just, really? We just... I swear I saw you order a latte or something on the oh, live stream. Oh, like... like we had one co- – this time around we did a coffee each morning oh, sure. because routine. That's yeah. what I was yeah, used yeah, to. But yeah, when yeah. we didn't in drive Baby hours – Baby needs his routine. No, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, if baby needs his routine, we should have been having bread at night. <laughs> but, yeah, this time we had just a coffee each morning because that was the routine. But we just didn't do any uppers mm. because it would just I'll be such a down. down. Yeah. And and physically did anything actually happen to you? Like- no, I had a – was it 14-hour sleep at the end of it? Yeah. 
I heard amazing. PJ had a really long one too, didn't you? Maybe 17 hours, something yeah, like 17. that. Yeah, 17. I was, I yeah, heard... we were done at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, I was in bed by 4 and I slept through till 6 the next morning. That's crazy. What are you consuming, like audio-wise? What radio shows, podcasts, what do you listen to? Um, listen to a bit of you guys. Listen to a bit of Home and End. Um, I, listen, I listen to specific parts of different shows. Mm-hmm. Like I like Stern purely to listen to his interview technique yeah. and I try and learn out of that. I don't really like the show in general with the shock tactics and all that sort of stuff. So I'll get different things out of different shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I listen to a lot of TV podcasts, yeah. behind the scenes, that sort of stuff. The interview um, stuff's interesting because I guess what we're trying to do is conversations, not interviews. Yeah. And like the hard, the, I guess the balance is that that sometimes means like it's listening but it's also not trying not to do question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. See, I think... Personally, interviewing is my weak spot, is mm. what I need to get better at because then I sometimes get too much into the conversation mm. and then afterwards I go, fuck, I got so much into the conversation and the conversation was great but there's all this shit there in the news about at the moment which I haven't asked about. Yeah. So I go too much into the conversation. Mm. But you're also in the game of having it succinct to four minutes. Like, yeah. which is which is a – that's the challenge yeah. for you yeah, as yeah, an interviewer, hard. right? It's like yeah. what do I need In to, four minutes I need to uh, make you at ease, yeah, build warm you up. Yeah. I need to extract all that information out of you that's really personal that you're probably not going to want to talk mm. about. Mm. And we've had some interviews get and, really bad. And doing it in the right order, right? <laughs> yeah. Because and you want to do something zany so yeah, you're different yeah. than everyone yeah. else. We had – PJ's going to hate me bring this up. We had um, Dua Lipa come in last year and she was like one of our first interviews at KISS. And just we launched the show and everything's so busy and someone was like, you know, Dua Lipa in tomorrow, what do you want to do? And we're like, okay, well, let's do two ideas. One idea was um, I sent off a fake record company email to a regional show. Yeah. I've been shipping it. Yeah. Um, and I said, hey, guys, you know, Jamie here from the record company, would you guys like 10 minutes? We'd do a leaper tomorrow. And they were like, yeah, it's do a leaper. And then when we were going to get her in, and we did this, um, I rang as the record rep. And I'm like, hey, I've got Dua Lipa here, about to put you through. Here we go. And then they'd be like, hey, Dua. And they'd chat to her, how are you today? And then I'd jump in and go, sorry, guys, no personal questions. Please just make it about the album. <laughs> Which in radio, you're just like, Jesus, yes, we'll make it about the album. And they'd be like, okay, sorry, Dua, are you enjoying your time in Australia? And I'd go, guys, again, I don't want to warn you. Like, whatever she's doing in Australia is personal. Can you please make it about the album? And they got the shits. And it was a great call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then also we played a game with her. And thank God it was a pre-record. PJ came up with this game. We're like, yeah, cool, we'll give it a go. Porn star or politician. Where we'll hold up a photo of someone <laughs> and they're either a politician in Australia or a porn star. And wow, did she get offended really, really quickly. Yeah. And all her like entourage are in the other room and they were fucking ropeable. And then afterwards they were like, you can't air any of it. Oh, you no. can air the, t- the two minutes we talk about the album. What about the Pauline Hanson bit? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, look, you know, we realised that was a shit idea. We're sorry about that. Yeah. But the prank call was amazing. Can we yeah. do that? And they were like, no, nah, we'll have I a bit about re- the album. Uh, Is this the, like, so it's an Australian so record company or whatever. Like surely. No, it was, producing- they, were like, they were like, no, nah. like um, she's very much managed out of the UK. Mm. Really? We, we edited everything up and sent it to them going, look, you know, we talk about her in a good light. Porn star politicians long gone. Yeah. But they were like, no, nah, no way. It's crazy. Oh, you've you got to try these ideas to see. You don't know yeah, what works. Yeah, but in hindsight, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you pick the reaction straight away. And what did we do? We pushed on with another really? photo. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're in like guest jail for a few months. You know, here's these young guys that have just uh, come from New Zealand. So access to They're no in one. a market with like your Eddie Maguire's, your Fifi boxes. Who yeah. the fuck do they think they yeah. are playing porn star or politician? Uh, no. And I'm pretty sure... I heard um, that some record reps were ringing other record reps. To let them know. Yeah, saying don't take this in there. Fuck. How annoying. You you spend 15 hours a week doing radio. How do you – I mean, there's a lot of hours left in the day, but how do you find you live a life? Because you you can't just be consumed with the job and the – you know, being in the studio and all that shit. You need to have some kind of. You got, it, it's an easy trap to fall into. You sit there going, "Okay, I got to go out and live now." We mm-hmm. could sit here and brainstorm all day, yeah. but it's like if I don't go out and live, I don't go down to Coles, pick the kids up, go for a coffee with a mate. Nothing else is going to mm. happen. Mm. You know, what do you and do? We, we do have weeks like that though, where we'll go. It'll get to Thursday, and Peach and I are like we got no personals. Yeah, and then you're like, because we haven't done anything. Does it become a bit in, like the 
where we find it is if we start talking about podcasting too much, if it's just like, oh, yeah. like It's balance. Yeah. Or you'll sit there and go, oh, I've got a funny story about the kids because that's all my life has been. Oh, can days. I tell yeah. you my, my son this morning? <laughs> oh, enough about him, mate. <laughs> Two and a half years old, lying back, nappy on, and just said, my dicky big. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? He's trying to take off that. his napper and he's like, my dicky big. And he pulls his nappy down. He's got a fucking full chub. Really? <laughs> How old is he? Two and a half. I cleaned can... the house yesterday. <laughs> Here we go. All day. Start I clean time. the house and I'm like, all right, it's done. There we Because, again, routine. I'm like, I want to start the week. Yeah. And then I just hear, oh, dad. And I'm like, what's wrong? And he goes, I pissed on the couch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was so into Peppa Pig. <laughs> and he's pissed over like two cushions. Oh, and then no. like, so there I'm washing the whole couch down. How old is he? He's uh, two and a half, three. Okay. Three. So, oh, right. you, you, yep. just, you were in Bali. What is it like taking the, the whole family? Is it? We book the nannies and make oh, sure yeah, they're great. available before we book the okay. nannies right. and the flights. Yeah. We use the same nannies every time. So they've oh, known perfect. the kids since they were like four months. That's uh-huh. great. Um, so then that way the kids see them. Yeah. And everyone's like, God, mate, you're going to Bali every six months. And it's like, yeah, because yeah, it's cheap. It's a six-hour flight. I'm not doing anything longer with two kids. Yeah. Um, and you, you just know it's easy. Yeah, it makes sense. What does your wife do? Uh, she works in radio as well. So when I met her, I was a uh, drive announcer at Today FM and she was a Black Thunder pilot. Great. And then PJ went through my list of exes. And so <laughs> Lou was a Black Thunder pilot at Today FM. Before that, I was dating a girl called Amy who was a Black Thunder pilot at 92.9 <laughs> in Perth. Anna from NXFM. A lot of street team. I'd be common from <laughs> SAFM. <laughs> because like, that's what the yeah, yeah. place I was, was yeah. the bloody radio station. That's so, yeah, sense. she works in um, uh, she works in sort of sales and programming. So, she deals with like all the sales briefs. Mm. She's a really creative. At your station? Yeah. Oh, no, cool. Well, yeah, but she's based on the gold side. Okay. So, we how, don't really see each other. How's that having, you know, that's that's inside the bubble as well, right? Yeah. I, personally, I don't mind it because we don't really deal with each other um, directly. Mm. We did it a bit more in New Zealand. But I find it's great because then she understands. Mm-hmm. Like she gets the hours. She gets that, you know, because just back before to coming up with different content and like you guys were saying, you might just be talking about podcasting all the time. Sometimes I'll sit there and go, Lou, I've got to go out to something this Saturday. I've mm-hmm. just got to go and do something because yeah. that's – I've got nothing yeah. else going on. What is your life. default in that scenario? Where do you go if, you, if you're feeling like a bit stuck? To me, lately I've been trying to – do stuff out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So if it's something I don't normally want to go the opening of something, I'll go, fuck it, I'm going to do it because I know it'll be awkward, I'll get mm. anxiety about it and yeah. it'll be something different I haven't spoken about. Uh-huh. If it was up to me, I'd just go to the Bowls Club in Hampton every week with Dell for a bit. But, yeah, no, yeah. you know, I can't be talking about what, the same stuff. What about, like, I, I found myself speaking to somebody, uh, this young kid at the gym, I asked him why, like, he asked, he's basically, the locker opened and this magazine he had was like the fitness first magazine of a guy on the front cover. And he said something, like, oh, it's, it's, um, it's not my magazine. And I could tell that he was probably, th- he's this young kid thinking, oh, mm. bloody, oh, he's this gay guy. He literally was thinking that. And mm. I asked him about it. And What'd so I was like, mate, why did you think that? Oh. And he's like, look. I just didn't oh, I want feel you to think. <laughs> no, but I was like, that's why I don't I go to the gym. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here yeah. My point. My point. I go straight back into the shower. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, but Tommy loves it. Tommy loves. Turned out this kid loves the chat, and he wanted to chat, and that's probably why he's sparking up, you know, random conversations. Because mm-hmm. I've seen him just chatting to everyone. He's this 16 year old kid that goes to the gym at night. He's like talking to me about his hard day. And but look at the content. The thing is, I do these things because I'm like thinking, okay, maybe this will yeah. do something for me. Which I guess it's. Even if you don't have a podcast or somewhere to share, it's like it's actually a good mantra to sort of put yourself out there a bit more. I'll, I'll hear some people go, oh, God, go on holidays and that's it. I just switch off. And it's like, I don't think you, if you're really into podcasting or radio or creating yeah. content, I don't think you can switch off. Yeah, you're always listening. Yeah, like something yeah. happens in Bali, I'd be like, oh, quick, grab the notes on my phone, jot it down. And you might jot down 50 things. And at the end of a holiday, you'll sit there and go, shit, 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 good. Mm, yeah. But I don't believe people who really are content creators can go, all right, I'm going to switch it off and mm. not notice yeah. anything. I mean, it is that um, Tommy and I talk about all for content. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you're like, I'm actually trying to, like, this needs to just be a moment and I don't, I shouldn't be creating content around yeah, this? Yeah, I think I went through a stage in Brisbane. I'd been there for like seven years and it was one of those situations where it was just too many bosses and everyone had a different vision of what the show was. And this one was like, we need to, and it was very stunty at the start because I was like 25 when I got it, which I just think was too young f- mm-hmm. to be a breakfast show host. Like, mm-hmm. you haven't lived enough. And then they were like, okay, it's been great. It's been stunty. All right, now let's be emotional and heavy stuff that you're dealing with. And I was like, 
oh, the fucking heaviest stuff is I can't afford drinks Saturday night. Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I think mum and dad, one of them was sick. And like, I remember doing this yarn about, oh God, they're old and they're sick. And like, I remember just in hindsight thinking, Christ, I was trying to milk that. Like, yeah. They're mm. old. I want everyone feeling. Do you reckon sorry you go the me. other way now? Like I've heard you mention your dad a few times, and it feels like it's like your know, dad's going through cancer stuff at the moment. But that's all good. Like I feel like you then sort of upbeat it a tiny bit. Um, no, I genuinely feel like mm-hmm. that now. Yeah. I I I won't sort of. I won't put like sugar on it or talk it mm-hmm. up. Like at, at the moment, dad's going through cancer treatment. He's really positive about it. Mm-hmm. If that turns to shit, though, I'd be completely honest yeah. and say, you know. Things aren't like dad will ring me because he does a segment on the show every week and he'll get up and go, Hey, if you're not bloody ringing me for my segment, I'm not dead yet. I want the airtime. <laughs> Do you <laughs> find that right. it's changed the your relationship with your dad going through all that stuff? Um, yeah, not really. Dad and I always had like a really good relationship. Maybe like, you know, if I ring him and chat, chat about it, I'm not just going to make that the context mm-hmm. of our call. Yeah, you know, I'll chat about it. Cool. Nothing else has changed there. Well, whether you're going to live for another 20 years or another year, let's mm-hmm. not spend all our time dealing with that. Yeah. I remember th- saying to her, my girlfriend, um, Bree, I said, oh, like I had to go to the hospital to see someone. And I was like, ah, I don't really like hospitals. I don't like funerals. And she's like, you know what? I was like, what? And she said, no one does. Yeah. I think that that's like, a, if you yeah, I think that's interesting. I think my nana and pa did. They love the spread that fucking get obsessed with like fucking <laughs> the wake. They oh, actually asked <laughs> my nana and pa Pa asked the other side of the family, someone had died, and they asked, like, the white lady funeral person if they could take some sandwiches home. And they said, oh, we keep that for they, the family. They said to like, they said to white ladies before the date, do you know the menu? <laughs> yeah, yet? exactly. Like, yeah. they, I went to visit my nan. She was um, she's passed away now, but she was in, like, a nursing home for her yeah. final years. And I remember going to visit her one day. And, like, I'm trying to joke around with the nurses whenever I go there. Yeah. And I was looking for a park and I couldn't find one. I put the window down. I screamed out to one of the nurses, what's going on? Is there a party? Where's my yeah. invite? <laughs> And you could see her like, shh, and she comes up. She's like, no, no, someone's passed. There's a funeral on today. <laughs> oh, no. And that's why there's a lot of family and friends here in the car park's busy. <laughs> and then I had to back out with my hazards on and the hearse is waiting to drive in. Oh, no. And I was just like, oh. Have you ever had, I've, I've had a moment where it was like the first date I ever went on with Brie. We were at a, a film festival and it went from, it was the first time I knew that I got hives from it, from stress sometimes, but I actually got welts from, there was a, they had all comedies and then they changed the, the tone completely on us without any warning into some really serious film and it was a full cinema and I just started laughing <laughs> out loud and I couldn't stop and Bree's just grabbing my arm just like shut the fuck up I ended up having to leave the cinema and I looked at my I looked at my arm I just had welts have, have you have you ever found- we, we've got to be careful with that because our team has quite like a sick sense of yeah. humor yeah. And I was only thinking about this the other day. We were joking about like really inappropriate stuff. And then I go, we've got to watch that because when the whole team has that sixth mm. sense of humour, <laughs> yeah. no one's there to balance it out. Yeah. So we might sit there and go, oh, cool, that's the tone we're going to take with that topic. But then you've got to go, hang on, we're all a little bit fucked up. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. like that. Have you ever caught yourself, like have you ever been in a situation <sighs> where something has been extremely serious but you haven't helped but getting the giggles? No, no, I'm not that much of an asshole. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, definitely it's really made, definitely I, a, a stress. If I've got a high level, if I'm doing something that I know this is a s- super serious thing, the anxiety that I have is that I almost am psyching myself into laughing. Really? If anything, if anything happens, my nana did a little trip at uh, like my pa's funeral going up and it makes me, it's just like, I can't fucking help it. I just laugh. have a bit, a bit of a laugh. Well, oh, I, I swear when I get a bit nervous, I tend to swear more. Dude. Yeah, well, I, I did think it at my wedding. Jules laughing. Lund said he does it on stage yeah. when he's emceeing. He starts oh, getting a bit yeah, sweary. I've, yeah, I've sort Seen of done that nervous and swear? Oh, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. swear? Yeah, like every now and then. Or you'll have that go-to gag you'll go to, mm-hmm. you know, and then you what just... What is like, it? <laughs> no, no, don't. Oh, that's how you can't <laughs> <they're the worst. laughs> reveal you're in the Oh, material. you'll get up, you know, if it's a movie premiere, who wants free stuff? And everyone cheers and you're like, oh, you fucking scabs. And then everyone will have a laugh and you'll be like, cool, all right, now we'll move on. And then show the movie. Got you on my side. Um, I've definitely made like mistakes in the past purely by um, being uneducated or finding something funny where, you know, I wasn't thinking about the consequences. Like last year, we we're talking about um, baristas and all the different types of milk mm-hmm. that people order. And then I was just like, mate, if I was a barista and you wanted like almond milk and you wanted mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I can tell you now, I'd be just fucking full cream mm-hmm. and, and I, <laughs> I'd be very surprised if people know the difference. Yeah. 
and we're joking around about it and I spoke to a barista on the air and I'm like, come on, be honest, you know. Yeah. And then that yeah. night, and it was the only time I've ever really um, had the small feeling of what it would be like to be part of a scandal. I was mm-hmm. sitting at home at night with my wife and we're on the couch and all of a sudden my phone started like notifications going off. And I've logged into Facebook and it was someone that had ripped off the audio from the show that day and they'd put it on um, Facebook groups of parents that deal with kids with oh, no. allergies, uh-huh. lactose intolerance. Not your audience. <laughs> not, <yes. laughs> we're not massive in the allergy yeah, exactly. world. Um, Guys, I didn't say that was a good snippet. But you like, know? And it was just, who are these people? Uh-huh. And then full on stories, like all night. I remember the next morning I woke up to go to work and there was messages of like, here's a photo of my friend's child that died because of an allergy. Mm-hmm. I hope you're happy trivializing this. Mm-hmm. And Don't cry over spilled milk. It was milk just milk. like, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was the reply. Just <laughs> cut and paste to everyone. And that was probably the only time I came into work. And this is last year. So like we're in this big market like Melbourne, we're up against massive uh-huh. names like Kitty Maguire. And Paige and I just looked at each other and we're like, fuck, what are we doing? Like this is, uh, you know. Yeah. Because you don't did. actually care that much. Because we, like, we wouldn't have like, done it if yeah. we knew that was going to offend yeah, exactly. that many people. We were just yeah. mucking around, and yeah. then it was like, "Fuck, this is the world we live in now." You do one, you say mm. one comment yeah. like that, and I get it. I get why they'd be upset and offended by it. Mm. But wow, the wow. Thinker Girls, Christy, mm. did this post about how when you go to a pharmacy, how long it fucking takes to get your script. What are mm. they doing out the back there? Good cool. And <laughs> I've experienced that, and I actually thought, "Oh yeah, that's pretty funny." It's like I've I've complained about that. What are they doing? But then that was a, there was a news article in the paper written about it that, you what know. What are they doing? Oh, it's like, you know, we have to be check. selective with the medicine. It's like very important. So the news article was ripping into her comments about yes, it? Yes, because yeah. then they got like pharmacists and nurses and, you know, people jumping on. It's like, I mean, you've been, we've talked about something about like, oh, missing an eye or something, mm-hmm. Josh, and you've been the sensitive one of saying, but there's people out there with no eyes. Mm-hmm. But the majority of people... Have eyes. Yeah. And so when are we going to go? We can't ever say something about like missing an arm, but, but we're not talking, you know, like if you've. But mi- I always find it's the things that you don't think yeah. are going to cause. Like we played body part bingo one day where we all got a bingo card for the show and I might have arm, a um, uh, left leg. Um, finger and basically ring now if you're missing a body part and you tell us the body part and it's like bingo I, if you ring up and go I'm missing left arm I'm like awesome okay cross out left arm and whoever fills their card first goes body part bingo and not one call and when we said give us a ring like not one complaint but oh, when God. we said give us a ring really? yeah. no, and we were like a... give us a ring if you're missing a body part and phone lines lit up because yeah. yeah. they were like yeah this is great so what's the difference in this I, it's the ones you don't realise mm-hmm. that are going to upset people. Yeah. Mm. One of the things I was um, thinking about earlier, when, whenever we have guests on, we're not very good at making it our normal show in regards to talking about some of the stuff that's going on. Mm. Do you find that? Like when if you've got a guest on, I, I remember hearing conversations on Fifth Angels, like how do we inject our show into a guest chat or, or whatever it is? But do you find there's moments where like if you've got arcs or whatever, how do you sort of... Well, to be honest, we don't take many guests. Yeah. We really don't. And mm-hmm. then what I'm finding is the guests we take um, will constantly take the same ones. So like yeah. Matt Preston's so they become in, friends of the show. Yeah, they do. And, yeah. and, and then like Matt Preston's in tomorrow, obviously for MasterChef, but mm-hmm. we're doing the search for Melbourne's best canteen. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. I guarantee whatever we do with him, yeah. which we're yet to brainstorm, will be our story arc related. It won't be let's spend four minutes just talking about MasterChef. I remember with the canteen stuff... That there was because a lot of the canteens, I don't know if this is still the same way, but they're run by like third party companies, like contractors. Like when I was a student really? representative, when I was a student representative council member, of course you were. I was, <laughs> I was the president, I was the youngest president ever. Yeah. And, and so I, uh, I was spearheading, I was actually, I actually found. Actually I've got found the badge, God, still got <laughs> the badge with me. Of course I did. But no, I, um, I actually t- I was just looking at my email because I've got every email since 2005. I finished school Ridiculous. in 2008. Other than I've got every Where's email other than, me my phone? than the last frightening with emails. I've got every email other than the two weeks of high at the daily talk show that we didn't get. But yeah, that's that's you've, you've got um, every email since when? 2005. And so I've this, got my inbox is 2000. Oh, geez, that's anxiety. 2990. Yeah, it's, it's in my gross, inbox. It's so I haven't checked. And so, do you? Right. Is it all spam? Yeah, it'll be free lemmingtons in the kitchen. Yeah. Come and help me sell. <laughs> I always think, like, because I, I fucking hate people who'll be like, okay, cool, so we'll organise that with Cam. Cam's sitting three metres that way, but they'll yeah, send him yeah, an email. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, come on. Well, there's a big thing, there's a big movement with that within tech because they're like, 
people are working remote. And so yeah. water cooler chat, go on. they're like, if you want to have water cooler chat, chat have it on Slack, nah, which is I'm, like instant messaging. Because then you have to go back and sift and then oh, start. when you yeah. have a group chat oh, and then you come in late to the gags yeah. and you're going to be like, oh. It's a, it's I mean, you're late to the party in that 2,990 oh, email. You know what I figure? If it's something really important. Yeah, they'll yeah. call you or yeah. text you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. I appreciate they're you never gonna, They're never going to say you're fired on email. Yeah. <laughs> they'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so anyway, I thought this was interesting. This was from 2005. 13th of July, 2005, I was using a program called Incredimail, which would allow you to add great sort of templates. And this one says, good morning. It was yeah, and it's like a gift. It's around, yeah. moving up and down. You're ahead of the time. And so I, I sent this email to my teacher, which, hey, Miss Trock, here's one idea for, SR, for an SRC thing, cheaper Mate. and healthier food at the school canteen. And I said, cheaper and healthier food is very important at this time with so many obese and unhealthy teenagers. Heavy. What were you weighing at that age? I was 110. <laughs> You're 110. I was 110. I, I peaked at 120. Really? Yeah. So I'm like 92. How'd you drop it? Um, a few eating disorders, <laughs> but like pr- yeah. probably yeah. Uh, side effect of the balding pills. Yeah, exactly. No, it was definitely. <laughs> well, I'm gonna munch no, on them today. It wasn't that. No, I did. Fuck, I did so many. I dropped like nine kilos with keto. I worked on a a film that was about juicing, like juice fast. I did. Oh, yeah. Two days of juice fast. Sorry, two weeks of juice fast. Yeah. But I fucking hated the green juice. I mean, you could just say you stopped eating fucking yeah. kilos of lollies. Well, it was it was. No, it but it wasn't great. even that. Because I was still like when I was in VCE, I'd fucking like, I would fast all day. Mm. And I was like, I was calorie counting and I'd have like a packet of natural confectionery company. Oh, so it wasn't that. It wasn't super healthy. I would eat. This is so degrading. I, on average, I reckon I'd eat um, 500 mils of ice cream a night. Really? Well, you hide your chocolate half in a your liter. car. Yeah, that's that's why I said 500 mils because it doesn't sound as bad as half a liter. Half a liter. Don't you hide, hide the chocolate in the car? You're still doing that? No, still no, doing that was a very bitter. small. Like, I'm not normally big on chocolate, but yeah. then we got sent this Daryl chocolate and Lou's like, put it in the fucking car. I don't want it in the house. And then like Lou, my wife, goes through this thing where she'll eat during the night. So she now puts all any chocolate and stuff in the house. She'll put it in the kid's bedroom. Because then at one o'clock in the morning, if she wakes up craving it, she sits there in her mind and goes, if I go for that, I could wake up the kids and have to deal with the kids. Yeah, yeah. We were so literally that talking about her going in that the other day, like sl- people who sleep eat. Is it is it at that level? Is she like consciously doing it? Yeah, um, not consciously. Like yeah. in the morning, she'll go, oh, I feel like shit because I got up and, yeah. and slept and, it. And had chocolate, like yeah. ate. Yeah, so that's but why she's we... She's not sleepwalking or is she... No, no, like she, she knows she's awake, but she'll go and eat. In the middle of the night, sure. Just need that hit. But she yep, didn't so put the iPhone alarm on for it. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's two o'clock. Here we go. Got a little, little slow s- cookie little, going. A little sneaky um, snack. So we won't keep like chocolate and stuff in the yeah. house or we'll hide in the kids' room. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. It's, I mean, if it's there, you But can ice cream's it. my weakness. Oh. Uh-huh. What well, sort of ice cream? You keep buying it, mate. That's like Ben and Jerry's. Or oh, we had Ben know. and Jerry's the other day. It is a good. They do um like you know the brownie one no, like the, the core yeah where it's like that. Yeah. yeah mate you know you're doing all right if you got Ben and Jerry's every well, night sorry <laughs> mate we're not all at the gym pumping iron like you it is pretty... got a funny story from the gym guys yeah we get it we go to the gym bit of fitness first banter uh, no but what I wanted to, what I wanted to uh we'd been working out how many episodes we've done four hundred episodes yeah. yeah congratulations thank you how many episodes do you rec- or how many shows do you oh. think You've done because uh, we Not get impressed Paige, by just 400. In radio? Yeah. Oh, uh, so um, let's do the math now. I've clocked up 20 years in radio this year. Fine, congratulations. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, this will be my 20th year because I got into it when I was 18. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably got my first drive shift dash show in Perth when I was 22. So, to, so 15 years. I can't do math, by the way. I was thinking to myself, so fuck, he's okay. 48. On, on average. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fucking 48. <laughs> We're about 40, year, 40 right, well, let's, weeks well, let's a year. Well, let's do this. Seven, seven years in Brisbane, three years in New Zealand, and 12 years. How many shows are you doing a year if you can't take, take out holiday, survey so breaks? 45 weeks. Times um, five. Times five equals 225. And so it's about 40. 12 years, 2,700. Yeah. Okay, sure. That's a lot Fair of shows. shows. So buzz me back. Was, yeah, well, no, so this is what we worked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what we worked out was we we said we're going to do it for 10 years. Yeah. That's that's our plan as a as a goal. And but, so we started in January 16 last year. But we'd never worked out how many shows will we have completed by the time we hit that 10 oh, years. Yeah, mark. how many would yeah. it be? So at the moment we're at 400. Uh, 
it will be January 16, 2028. Yep. Makes sense. And we'll have done 3,500 episodes. That's pretty cool, eh? Yeah. yeah. On the like the exact amount, which I thought was cool. Round and you number. Know, I, I guarantee you, you know why it'll be successful? Because no one else will do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 but that was no, our thing. So when we got the job in Melbourne, we were like, um, we cannot compete um, with massive names. We are yeah. not known. We're yeah. nobodies. We're up against Fifi, Box, mm-hmm. Chrissy Swan, Sam Pang. They're all on TV shows, mm-hmm. you know, Fev, all that. So we were like, the only thing we can try and beat them is by working harder. Mm. So that's why we'll do 57 hours on it. That's why we'll go down the fucking Yarra on a unicorn in winter because I don't believe the other teams are going to do it or they haven't got time to do it. Do you have a positive outlook on radio or how do you think radio is going to change? Oh, everyone's trying to work that out. Um, you know What's what? Your for, the, take for, the on first, for the first time, I'm not overthinking it. Yeah. Like mm. the younger me growing up, I was like, okay, so I'm going to go to Perth. I'll do two years there. Mm. Then I'm going to go to Brisbane. Then I want to move to there. Mm-hmm. This is the first time in my life I'm sitting here going, uh, we're contracted till the end of next year. What happens after that? Who knows? Um, do I've, you and PJ have conversations around like this show could be, if Spotify was to, to say, hey, we're going to give you X amount of cash to come on and do a show? Through that, or it, remember Beats one. Remember Apple was oh, like, yeah, like, that's right. And that's they took um, what's his name, the Kiwi yeah. DJ. It's, it's oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That. That was it's it's strange though because it feels like such a long time ago. But it re- like Beats one sort of two didn't, years, if that. Yeah, mm. it didn't really um, become much of a thing. But it feels like we're evolving and other I think things that's are right. happening. They're, it will go that way. Yeah, and so have have I you think, had that? So I think the future radio. The only thing I definitely agree with is I think the future radio is shows. Mm-hmm. It's it shows it won't be breaking songs or music mm. formats yeah. and stuff. I think the future of radio will be like Netflix. It'll be shows all the time. Were you ever a music jock? Um, yeah. Uh-huh. You got to start there. Don't terrible you? with like breaking. Did you have any stuff. interest in that sort of stuff? No, I was more of a content guy yeah. than music. To be honest, uh-huh. like if I come out of a song now, and I'm like, oh, that's a banger. Everyone in the team will laugh. At me. <laughs> like, Fucking good on you, mate. I mean, the team you've got is is it sustainable to last? 10 years, you think? Yep, 100%. PJ um, and I are different in the respect that, see, I'd sit here and go, cool, I'm, I'm happy, let's lock away 10 years, mm-hmm. where Paige is one of those people where her boyfriend's in New Zealand, her dad and family are in New Zealand, so the idea of locking in something too long-term mm. freaks her out. So out of respect to that, we're like, hey, we're contracted to the end of next year, let's just wait till the end of next year and then see how we're feeling in life. Mm. And then um, like we did in New Zealand when it was coming over here, we'll go out for dinner with Paige, me, her partner and my partner. Because it's it's yeah. partner's decision uh-huh. as well. And we're yeah. all going to sit there and go, okay, how are we feeling? Mm-hmm. And lucky for us, we all get along, mm. which is great. Well, and I think being some of these young shows, they're getting put together. They, they've got different missions. Yeah. And so unless it's... Which is so frustrating. It's a different position if next year, end of next year, you guys have been killing it and it's an amazing offer. Yeah. I mean, you know, what are they going to be looking you know, at? But you've she, got but good options. I mean, you know, but the end of next year, you know, her family might need her home yeah. or the boyfriend mm-hmm. can't move here um, and she might go, oh, relationships are more important. Than I think vision-wise what we want out of the show, mm-hmm. 100% we're on the same track there. Yeah. It's just more where we're going to be at in our lives at yeah. that point. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever thought about what it could look like? Like do you, I was listening to... Craig Bruce's last Game Changers episode, he was talking to Bean from yep. Kevin and Bean and he was like, that guy had has been doing a show for a market that he hasn't lived in yeah. for <laughs> most of his most of the show show's life. Do you think that you you could do something like that? What do you think, like, if you were I, to modernise the show? I could do the show um, for a market Bali. from a different yeah, from, market. From definitely, Bali. yep, yep, <laughs> bin tanks. Um, but I definitely couldn't do the show in separate studios from Peach. Like yeah. when yeah. Uh, we're in New Zealand at one point, we're about to have our second baby and – I think there was maybe a job offer or something back in Australia. So I was looking at going back and the bosses over there were like, sign on here. You can do the drive show from Australia Mm -hmm. and fuck, we'll give you a five year deal or whatever. And it was great. And financially you're setting stuff, but the Mm -hmm. idea of me going into a booth Mm. and knowing the rest of the team are in a studio having fun over in New Zealand. I'm in this little booth watching him on Skype. I was just like, no, no Mm. way. So I don't, I don't mind that. I like the idea of like, imagine being in a cottage though, or maybe for you in like a villa. Yeah, in like but Bali. So, you know what? I'd used to. But feel having like a producer, that. imagine if you had like the producers can come every six weeks or whatever and I'd set have up to shop. Have half the team there. Yeah. Like every day. Yeah. You, you couldn't. Like, I did one show out of Brisbane the other week and I hated it. Yeah. Just being by myself. Is it because like room. no resources? Like I feel like when people no, do that. No, there's resources there. Like, people like that. Okay. You knew where you had to go. Like, <laughs> like they had called the producing team for the local shop there uh-huh. and they were helping me out with stuff. But it was just. 
Um, Paige said one day, it was it was the penny drop moment like when Andy s- said the people show, on mm-hmm. Hamish and Andy, and they're like, oh, my God, that's our show. Paige said one day we could have the most um, under prep show, but if the vibe's right, mm-hmm. the show will be amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we could prep the hell out of a show and if we're all a bit off, that show is shit. Mm-hmm. I think it starts feeling like a job when you just have to go into yeah. a booth yeah. and you're not around the people. Yeah, and you, then you're doing it for the money. Yeah. You're doing it to pay the bills and it's not long term. Mm. I still think I like the idea of no, being no. in a booth on my own, <laughs> potentially. I mean like. You guys should set up a curtain for 10 episodes yeah, and just, just see how it feels where you can't nah, see each other. I mean we did 100 we're... episodes while Josh was travelling. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, did the, it's, it was I mean so that was annoying because I was in a hotel and I didn't have guaranteed. <laughs> but if I had fibre, like a real fast connection and I had like we had fast thing and then I could just go off. Part of it is because like I was talking to Tommy about it. I think it's. We do client work still right now. That's how we pay the bills. And I think what I'm envisioning is uh, not doing that. Like I think part of it is like the booth signifies the day that we're not. What's we're the doing life you're living time. though? Though. Well, because I would want to go for walks and shit. So it's so, like yeah. I was imagining you yesterday. do a one hour show. You got twenty three fucking hours to go for a walk. You get, get a lot of ideas. <laughs> then one of the amazing ideas, mate. Like, like living in Colorado or something. Have you ever have you ever thought about living How about overseas? We get this paid for first. These arms cost three thousand yeah, dollars for the, the arms. We're, we're still paying off the arms, and then we'll worry then we'll about the chalet in Colorado. Yeah, I think it's something you do when you've got shit loads of cash. Yeah, we're, we're, we've cashed out. Yeah, and now we. Well, just... the show's been just amazing. Hamish and Andy stand for ten years, <laughs> yeah. and then you're like, all right, we'll keep doing so it. So maybe, it maybe booth. at three th- episode three thousand five hundred. <laughs> yeah, that's when you do the booth. Then I do the booth. Yeah, oh, I get it. I, it sort of, it sort of makes sense. Does, does, so it doesn't feel like a job for you. No, you not now. now. Absolutely. And I've been on shows where it has in the past. Mm. Um, not because of anyone's fault, just, you know, you've run no, out of No, it's always someone's or, fault, mate. It yeah, felt like a job that I was I mean, what's He still the, works in the building. He's giving uh, really, uh, sure. well, uh, uh, Is it the same building? So when we... Oh, no, 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 he's no, at Nova. No, he's at Nova. Nova. Yeah, yeah. Uh, down the street, fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> but I used to, like, because when I was doing breakfast in Brisbane, if we'd fly to Melbourne, um, you know, we'd see Matt. And I always got along with Matt fine. But then when we got to Melbourne, we were going around yeah. looking for schools for our five-year-old. And when we were going to one school... Um, my wife goes, don't, don't mention what you do here mm-hmm. with the interview with the principal. And I'm like, why are you ashamed of me? She's like, no, <laughs> just, let's just try and get into this school. Uh-huh. And we went in and then um, the principal goes, oh, so, you know, what do you do? And I thought, oh, fuck. And I'm like, oh, I work in media. And they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, what do you mean? And I'm like, oh, radio. And he goes, oh. And I said, oh, breakfast radio. He goes, oh, what station? And I said, oh, Kiss. And he goes, oh, Matt Tilly's a good friend of mine, so you've taken his job. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, you could have heard. A fucking pin drop. And my <laughs> wife looked at me like, well, we're not doing the tour here. I'm not going to waste that time walking around the tour here. I mean, because so the my thing son is, does not go to that school. I mean, because the thing is that you, it's not your decision, right? This is not. And this is, or was it? No, no, no. <laughs> and, and so, like, do you think that that's, you know, when people come into new markets and all that sort of thing, like, I'm guessing, like, people should just have more empathy, I guess, for the fact that, like, no one's fucking deciding mm. who go like I, but guess, I think it's the old school i think you are you've been in for 20 years but you seem more new school than what i've dealt with of mm. the old school radio heads i think going to new zealand was the best thing for me mm. it was like a, honestly it was like a new lease on radio life and you lost your nickname lost the nickname <laughs> enjoyed radio a lot more um i was around uh, a younger team who was sort of um new zealand was a bit more innocent to mm-hmm. Australia, like over there, you know, big names in radio aren't treated like big names. You know, if you were kingpin of the station, you're the breakfast show. If everyone was going to an event, we're all on the fucking minibus. You're not in a yeah, high sure, car or yeah. anything like that. So there was no sort of egos or anything like that. So when I went over there, it was a really f- a nice fresh change. Why yeah. Why do you think there are egos within radio? I don't know, maybe. I mean, there's, there's a lot of big names in radio now who – don't just do radio. That's the mm-hmm. other thing. They're big TV stars. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. you know they're not just radio people anymore. Yeah. But in saying does that, Australia like, have TV stars? Like in some regard, like I just don't think of like, oh, I, I don't think, think of like you're on TV, but I don't know like yeah. I don't but, think I think, of but, people I, but I always think we sit there and go, but we're in the industry or we're in a yeah. city living. I always yeah. say to my team, I'm like, you know, to us, um, we might think, you know, oh god. Um, Hugh Jackman's done this. This is the biggest news in our world. Mm-hmm. It's like I always chat with my sisters when I go to Brisbane because they're um, a bit older. Two of them have got kids and they're in the burbs. Like mm-hmm. half the stories that we think are big in entertainment, yeah. they would mm. have a fucking clue who we're talking about. <laughs> sure. 
Mm, they're thinking about Manu. Yeah, and yeah, which Manu to them would be like, yeah. oh my God, Jesus Christ has walked yeah, into Westfield. Manu's I, I think probably what's rattled it and not sh- shaken it out of a lot of these radio stars is that their job will be gone very soon. It's a fleeting market. Like for some of them it's like. Well, can, you it, can't just be talent anymore. Like, no, you can't just no. be talent. And that's like part of it, thing. which is like there are pe- many people who it's just like, like, you know, who who won't do digital, right? Yeah. Who it's like, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be filmed unless yeah. I've got and X, Y, and Z. It's like, yeah. how the fuck yeah. can you build yeah. a show? You can't last. Do, doing no, no, doing no. that now. Mm. I mean, uh, I used to work at the fire brigade in the media department, and there's a the big culture in I feel like amongst the fireies that when you're traveling, you can basically rock up in any city and go into the fire station and have a chat. And I feel like radio has a little bit of that too, yeah. where it's like you go to different radio stations. Have you done that much where you go overseas and you actually pop in? And I was say, going you know, to pop into a Bali radio station really? when I was there, <laughs> not for a tax write-off, but we were just we were, we were honestly having this conversation in Bali, yeah. and I was talking to the the nanny, um, saying, you know, do you have massive stations yeah. here? And she was showing us, and and we were gonna like I was gonna go and pop in and say hi. Was it Indonesian person or is it like an Aussie? I could imagine no, it being no, no, like they were an Aussie. Indonesian. Oh, really cool. Um, but not like Dubai where there's so many yeah. Aussie. But yeah. that's but I I'm a radio. And, nerd. Yeah. and I'm not ashamed by that. Like mm. I love that. Mm. You know, we're mentioning bags before. You know, mm. you, I got mates everywhere across mm. the country in radio. Yeah. He's and a radio nerd too. Oh, full radio nerd. Yeah. Um, and you know, like we talk about the big names and egos and stuff, but there's there's big names that are still very grounded. Like you know, um, um Fief and Jules <laughs> sent us flowers yeah. when we had our first kid. Yeah, Fief sent us a good luck message. Where and I'm not. So were they flowers really, that had been sent to the station? Just <laughs> like you did for with me. hidden microphones <laughs> and cameras in them, just in case they're eavesdropping on our brainstorm. Um, but like, I'm not super friends with Fief, and mm. you know, we've always chatted over the years mm. of us here in an event. But she sent us a good luck message. Chrissy Swan, who I'd never met, reached mm. out mm-hmm. to say good luck. Like, you know, there are still a lot of good people. Yeah. Have you? I don't know if you've seen. Uh, but maybe that's you. Maybe that's yeah. the connection to you because that's not the experience I've had working with some of these people yeah, right. and what they were saying about the other yeah, people, right. the yeah, other yeah. stars. And so if your head's not in that place, it's yeah. like, I actually fucking, you seem like a lovely guy. You are the person I hear on radio. And when I met, met you today, you, you're the same person. Yeah. So there's no incongruency. Live the lie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Live Never. the lie. No, I think there's definitely like I put you. I up know there. what you mean though. Yeah, like, if yeah. you're, yeah. Well, I think like I put I put you up there with like Shane Jacobson is someone who I've all like. I'd be is, shocked if he was an asshole. Yeah. Like, if well, he came yeah. into the room, I'd be like, oh, I didn't. Pick yeah, that and up. I've worked really closely with Shane. I used to do his social media back in the day, and he was like, he was at the Logies, and it's like uh, all the stars or whatever. I'm fucking there filming as a digital sweaty. content producer. You would have been sweaty. I was so sweaty, so sweaty. Oh, I was about 110. Can I point out, it is like an oven in is it you pretty warm in oh, that heat is mate. on actually it's it is turned like, off someone turned it back on yeah, it is we, like we, an oven you can turn it off get out can you, turn, you can, can tell you turn the lighters out the window I was going <laughs> to bring it up at the start and I'm like oh let's just see how it goes but, you know. well I think that most people keep the studio cool as well don't they oh, yeah. it's freezing yeah. yeah which is like I'm actually all for I feel like at the moment it is fucking cold uh, in Melbourne but what I was going to say is actually like, you made a co- comment when you came in that it was cold outside didn't you you yeah. said it was fucking freezing, but yeah, I think Matt, were you just pointing out the fact? That was small talk. <laughs> <laughs> it was nervous. <laughs> That's your tick. Where yeah. the chat? Where the chat? <laughs> That's good banter. Yeah, um, no, I was like, oh, show me around the office. Oh, I don't give a shit what the office is like. <laughs> <laughs> we're just getting to know each other. No, but I think that no, I, that's one thing I've even I said it to Tommy earlier today. Like your interactions with us, like show, like I think demonstrates how much of a good person you are on and off the air. Like Thanks, you couldn't guys. make it uh, last week. And you call. And I think that that's actually fucking rare. I think people yeah. actually like making an effort and. Um, well, I because I, I had to cancel last week mm. on you guys. And I know what it's like. If someone cancels, you're mm. like, fuck me. Well, now I've got to, you know, fill that gap in the show and stuff. Um, mm. There was a moment oh, I'll talk, when we we're doing the 57 hours and we had Eddie Maguire locked in for an interview at five o'clock. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we just thought, oh, we'll get Eddie on. He's always a decent chat. Obviously, I'm going to plug the hell out of his show. Um, and then. We're about to go to web. We're in news, and one of the producers, David, the intern, who we pinched after a month, he's like, uh, "Eddie McGuire's there." Um, the phone quality is really terrible, and I said, "Why?" And he goes, "Oh, he's on speakerphone." And I said, "Did you ask him to take it off speaker?" Because we always ask yeah. people, like, "Take it off speaker if you mm-hmm. can't hear." And he goes, "Yeah." Um, he Eddie said, "It is what it is. I'm driving." <laughs> and then we all laughed and we were like, "Pussy, you didn't yeah. want to tell him." <laughs> and we started the chat, and it was the quality was 
like just terrible. Yeah, and even yeah. after like 36 and he's a broadcaster. Years, you should fucking know. And that's what fucked me off. Yeah. I was like, come on. If someone yeah, yeah. rang up and did this to your oh, show, definitely. it is just it's yeah. like rude. Yeah. And I had to cut him off. And I'm like, Eddie, we can't hear you, mate. I've got to cut you off. But I, like, I was like, look, we, you know. You brought because... up Sam Newman. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, are you going to We still plug his show and everything. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, fuck, don't, you know, be rude to It the... does make a difference, right? Like I think that also because it is in some regards, like we're in this weird sort of um, hybrid where like Tommy and I sit outside of the industry, but we fucking enjoy the the radio stuff still we yeah. enjoy enjoy that mm. but it's interesting how I don't think you sit outside the industry now the industry is this like yeah. every radio station now is pouring oodles of cash into podcasts yeah mm. and what do you think that what is what do you think that means Where to fucked. you that's what it means you guys <laughs> no, but, 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 but i think that you guys are that new i think new that's the way but that's that. the way shows will go our stations yeah. will go uh -huh. stations will be like a netflix it'll be mm. just radio shows mm. i don't think you'll listen to the radio in the future for just songs and little and you know announcement bits during the day mm. yeah i think nice chunks of i think i think music word. jocks are the ones that i'd be worried about if i was a music job yeah do you um do you find that you can just get paid as a radio person and that's it it feels like a lot of people are slashies it's like you're a radio person but you're doing i'd love to do other stuff but pj and i made the thing that for the first um year to two years we just made the pact that we mm. weren't going to try and um, get spots on TV show. And it's hard because, you know, mm. if you get a spot on, you know, um, have you been paying attention? That's great. That's yeah. really good publicity. But it's hard because the minute you start doing that stuff, you know, radio doesn't necessarily become second. But, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm spending 10% of time there and it's only 90% mm. on the radio. Yeah. We're splitting which, your focus. It's it is. It is. Hard. And we just made the pack. We're like, no matter what goes on or we, you know, get offered or sniffed at, yeah. we're just going to focus on this for the first year and a half. It's hard to find someone that you can have that agreement with. Like for Josh mm -hmm. and I, our personal social medias have taken a hit. I mean, Josh yeah. didn't have one for I was a while. Retired from but it. I think it's like the mission is if you're both in on that same yeah. trajectory together. And yeah. then you've got you've got to respect what the other person wants to do as well. Like Peach does a lot more social than mm -hmm. I do, and mm -hmm. she'll do like endorsement campaigns and stuff. And you know, it doesn't. It's no skin off my nose. It doesn't yeah. affect me as yeah. long as she's not losing focus on the show. Then you know, be mad not to support it. But her and I were just. We we're very lucky we're at the start. We just spent so long building our relationship at the start. We'd go out at least once a week, mm -hmm. just her and I, uh, for a coffee and have it out and go, what have, what have I done uh, that's fucked you off this mm. week or vice versa? Mm. Fuck, that's hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, but no, but I was saying this to someone the other day. It's, it's not hard if you do that at the start. It's yeah. when you leave things yeah, and yeah. they build over time and it's been six months and he'll do something small that'll piss you off. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be like, what was it? And you'll be like, you're 10 minutes late. Yeah. Mate, but you're 10 minutes late all the time. Yeah. And it's actually not yeah. a big issue if you deal with it straight away. It feels mm. like we're, I think that we had so many blow ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we, spent, like first, I mean, but they're they good though. It's like yeah. a relationship. You know, when you meet people and they go, we never fight. Yeah. And I go, well, one day when you fight in 20 years, <laughs> you're fucked. Because yeah, they're yeah. going to bring out notes going, 14 years ago, you said I looked fat and <laughs> it, like, it wasn't good for baby though. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Baby, Mr. 97 would, was there and he would, um, yeah, I mean, I think that was part of. I mean, how did you feel watching the blow ups as a young person did in the business? Did they make you pick sides? <laughs> uh, a little bit. You picked my side. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, you're sort of there, and it's it's uncomfortable, but it's like you know that it has to happen anyway, so you just sort of dad and dad are fighting. Yeah, <laughs> I said to I said to you, I said, does any of your mates talk like this? No, and you said no, no. and I think that's the J Josh and I have a unique friendship where we actually talk through a lot of shit. Yeah, you got it. And yeah. so I, I would find that hard and I did find it hard working when I got assigned a co-host. Yeah. You know, I was assigned to these. So you, the, you then, fuck, it's like, I know though, because we weren't at a high level in Shepparton because we both had like, oh, you'd fucking take that offer at a drop of a hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so hard. Well, this feels like it's more autonomous. At the top in Melbourne, yeah. you know. It's well, it reminds me of when Karen came in to the office. We had a listener, Karen, and we invited her in and then she was she's a film a young filmmaker who's recently moved from Macau and she's studying here. So it's sitting on the show and then I said, oh, actually, we're just doing our whip. Like, do you want to see how we sort of do everything? It's like... Yeah, okay, let's, I'll do that. That's cool. Anyway, um, Tommy gets a call and something's changed within a project and the, Tommy and I have a, a blow up. Yeah. She's sitting uh, there. Karen's just <laughs> sitting there. But the great thing is Mr. 97's like, 
trying to talk to her, being like, so, Karen, what have you got on for today? <laughs> Karen, I think let me see a tour of the office. <laughs> <laughs> Come up and look at the I, see, I said to Mr. 97, you're about half an hour late on that one. <laughs> and a the thing try. was, the good thing try. is, I can't fucking argue if someone else is talking, so I'm just like, shut the fuck up, 97. So yeah, <laughs> yeah so it, was, it was absolutely You know the fucked up thing is I walked away from that thinking... We handled that really well. Yeah, well, I think, I, I think that we knew. I think we knew that it was a bit fucked up when I was like, "Karen, so, don't come back." Yeah, well, I, I said, literally said to Karen, like, "Karen, um, just so you know, the reason why this upsets me." And before you know it, Karen is sort of this mediator between the whole thing, and so she's Karen, like, "Karen, oh, okay. side are you on now?" Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. I just like the show. Yeah, do, I just do, want to watch the show. Do you have many people sitting in on your show? Um, we don't mind people sitting in in the um, like airlock area. Yeah. We don't want anyone in the studio. If uh-huh. a guest comes in, we yeah. don't want a manager mm-hmm. in there or anything like yeah, that. Sure. We just it, it sounds wanky, but we're just such we're so massive on vibe. Mm-hmm. And if someone's just sitting there like a record, I remember doing an interview with um, remember Twilight when it came out. Mm-hmm. It was Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson, and I had to go to the hotel and interview them. And so you're Kristen Stewart, you're Robert Pattinson. Mm-hmm. The camera there is me. This is their manager, and he sat in, in the, the middle. middle. In the middle. Um, maybe Did we get a clean two shot? 30, 30, no, he didn't. He was in the shot. So he sat 30 centimetres back. Oh, sorry. He was just out of camera view because they'd shoot across. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was 30 centimetres back but in the middle and you'd ask a question and he'd go. <laughs> and he was directing oh, no. you to go to the next one. And it was like, well, this is, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not vibing this yeah. interview. Like, I mean, what makes a good vibe versus, versus a bad vibe, do you think? I just, if we're doing the show and I look out and everyone's on their phones uh-huh. or there's people sitting in and you can tell they're not yeah. watching mm. or listening, then you don't want to look out and see that. But in saying that, like the first thing we did when we got to the station, we were like, we want to punch out. Because the, the phone, we were chatting about it before, the phone mm-hmm. room outside mm-hmm. the studio never used to overlook the team, yeah. all the KISS team and the sales team and everything. So we punched out that wall and put stairs in. And I remember like the first day, sales reps would come up and they'd be like, were you there? Were you there? <laughs> and then up the stairs. And we're like, yes, come yeah, here. Yeah. Like if you guys so can't see the show, you know, yeah. I'm a big believer in unless everyone inside the building is liking the show and cheering for it, mm-hmm. you're fucked outside the building. Yeah. Yeah. Like, unless everyone's, you know. So what's in the product internally then? So when it comes to day to day, you hanging in the office for long? Um, so we all get in just before five. We're in a meeting at five. On air at six. Off air at nine. Then we pre-record some stuff because we do a night show where they replay it around the country. Um, and then we'll be in meetings. We're normally out at eleven thirty, twelve. So mm-hmm. normal, probably twelve on average twelve. But yeah. that can blow out to one. Paige went to school the other day and recorded till three. We're never out before 11.30. And anything ritualistic that you do to set that vibe? Like if you want to, if you've got a guest, for instance, we're constantly like making slight tweaks. Like let's make it, like when we started, it was literally like we're spending ages fucking setting up our equipment and all that sort of things. Like, okay, well, let's just have the gear ready and ready to go. Like I'm very much like everything's got to be ready to go. We've tried different things where, okay, I'll start doing the intro of Ricky Lee, yeah. and as then as I'm to, yeah, 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 we'll try bit, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we've tried other things where have you ever done that live? Like you see, like Howard Stern used to do that a lot, which is like yeah, he'd be talking, and I guess it creates a sense of always. Like it. It's an always on approach. I think if the show's live and they're coming on as a live guest, yeah. I actually really like uh-huh. it. I think if it's a pre-recorded, it's just fucking weird. <laughs> oh. Wait there, Matt. Wait there, Matt Preston. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess he's in the building, Matt Preston. Okay, like, it's yeah, just yeah. like we've tried that. And it's just awkward. But yeah. yeah, if it's live, I actually don't mind them walking in like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's cool. Um, uh, when it comes to vibe. We just have a we just have a no bullshit policy. There's mm-hmm. no closed meetings, like we said before yeah. about survey results. Yeah. Every you know, if if we do an air check with the boss after the show, all the producers come into the air check. Mm-hmm. We never really do a one on one chat with the boss without the team there. Yeah. And is there is there a sense that like uh, back in twenty twelve, radio it was like worry about what's coming through the speakers, like when there was that obsession of digital and it was coming up, there was always the person saying we're out. We are a radio show. If it doesn't sound good, nothing else matters. Yeah. What What is the friction at the moment between, hey, that's a that fucking uh, idea of going down the Yarra. That's going to make great video content, but it's actually not going to be great through the speakers. Oh, I think. I do believe at the end of the day, if it's going to sound shit through the speakers, there's no yeah. point doing it. Yeah, or yeah. if we come up with something where we go, that's really good video, but mm-hmm. like there's there's no great radio aspect to it. Then now we'll just do it as a video. Mm-hmm. And then, you know what, so say if the Yarra wasn't good radio content, and it was, but say if it yeah. wasn't and we just did it as a video, 
surely there's got to be a funny story at least <laughs> yeah, that'll come yeah, out yeah. of that. Yeah. And then we'll just go on in the next day and go, oh, we went down the Yarra in Inflatable yeah. yesterday. Here's the funny story. And if you want to yeah. see the full video, then go yeah. to the Facebook well, page. Yeah. We've seen it as a bit of a hack to go if we make videos separate to the show, they're actually story opportunities for the show. Oh, yeah. yeah. So like, then, say, the wine. Say, if you didn't, say, you could have taken the show and done the mm-hmm. podcast while making the wine, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you sat there going, oh, look, the actual process is quite boring for the radio, just do it as a separate video. Surely something's funny yeah. or there's going to be a story that comes mm. out of it. Mm. How often great. are you bringing, like, your iPhone and recording stuff? Um, a fair bit. When I was in Bali, there was um, I went for a massage, and I swear they were talking about me. So <laughs> I recorded recorded it, and then went home and got the um, Indonesian nanny to translate. Oh, it. And what, what were oh, they that's... saying? Um, they said uh, the lady called me. Don't fat, tell me it was about balding, fat white man. <laughs> and because I was getting a body scrub, the other guy in the place said he very dirty. Because I, I come <laughs> back twice. Very dirty. Very dirty. Um, you know, you know they talk in that uh, different tone. Yeah, exactly. And on the tape, I'm yeah. like. What did he say? Gee, there's nothing. Just come with me. This <laughs> and I, I, so I recorded I played it to the Indonesian nanny yeah. and I said, don't tell me what it said, mm-hmm. what they said. Just tell me if it was about me. Yeah. Because yeah. if it wasn't about me, then we wouldn't yeah, have done sure. it on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, All and, for she, content. and she was laughing. And she goes, yeah, 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 it's about you. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> so I went back, gave the audio to the production guys. We played it on the air and said, look, if you uh, speak Indonesian, can you ring oh, and, that's tell so us good. and tell us what they said? Uh, Jace, thanks for coming on the Boys, Daily Talk Show. It has show. been a pleasure. Congratulations oh, thank on you. 400 amps. And I do mean it. Like you sit here and you talk about the number and you, I have no doubt this show will be successful purely because you are doing it every day mm-hmm. and you're going to do it for mm. 10 years. Yeah. No so one many other people do that shit. That. No, no, <laughs> but that's how you win. And thank you yeah. to the Gronk Squad for celebrating episode 400 as well. We had a bunch of, we realised that over the last two weeks, our fucking, since we, we launched this amazing new mm. website of the daily talk show.com, didn't realise that we hadn't updated our fucking email settings. So for the past two weeks, hi at the daily talk show.com hasn't been going anywhere. We so could no one, send them out. We could send emails. Yeah. Coming in. yeah. No. And so we were wondering, like, geez, it's been a bit quiet on the emails. We people literally don't had, like the new website. <laughs> <getting their own laughs> feedback. Absolutely. But, but anyway, we, we had a bunch of people email us. Uh, Grace uh, is part of the Gronk squad. She's uh, on a five week Europe trip right now. And she's been mm. listening to the show do constantly. You, do you love getting like the random emails from the yeah. most yeah. random place? Like we get the Texas police department oh, that that's listen so to us on the graveyard shift. And they're Ow. like, we've got you in the squad cars. We listen to the podcast. That's and so just, good. Po- how do they podcast. do it? They just podcast. Oh, sorry, sorry. And they heard podcast. of podcast- podcasting. It's podcast? this new. <laughs> 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 and they play it in the squad cars during the yeah. graveyard shift. How and do I they find it? I don't get. But that's what I love about podcasting. And like you said before with. You know, Instagram, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Ways to find we even, we also got a, a Dan Dib, another Gronk who listens to the show, has written a rap yeah. and produced a whole rap, which we're going to play tomorrow, yeah. all about the Daily Talk show. It's, it's so. a good time. Wouldn't they have been headless? They yeah. went to all that work and then sent the email and got the bounce back. Yeah. No, well, they didn't, the fucked up thing is, they didn't even get a bounce back. So the oh. thing was, he's like, oh, I said, that's how we worked it out. Yeah. He DM'd, he's like, hey, how do I get, I just said, email it. He's like, okay, send. My mate haven't got yeah. it yet. And then I was like, you must be fucking up the email. And then I go through, I'm like, the last email we got was July 8. Hmm. So annoying. And then did you send all, a test email? That's the yeah, worst. I did the test and it's like, I didn't get that. And then uh, Mr. 97 does a great job looking after a, a lot of things. No, he dropped the ball. And then. so <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we, we definitely, he did, I did uh, put in our Slack group, which is our sort of group message. I'm like, hey guys, don't know about the email. No, seven's like, nah, it's definitely, you should be fine. No, back to the end yeah, of the yeah, yeah. And, then, and then I get a phone. Not my phone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he did call me, which uh, at that point I, I didn't answer. The worst <laughs> is the test email. We did a phone topic the other day and no one rang for it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, well, the phones are fucked. I'll, I'll test the phones. Obviously, so, oh, no, that's me ringing. Okay, cool. It it's is, just um, a shit topic. It is Blame Monday. Who's oh, yeah, fault who's was to blame? it? I, I think it was a mix. I mean, the great. this is how far Tommy has come. He started meditating at the start of the year. Oh, PJ's he's also, this. She did yeah. just a full meditation course. He's that's also great. not drinking at the moment too for the yeah. year, so I'll have the red wine because I never You're used for, to all, drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, he's, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so he's, and so, but he's, but straight away, uh, Tommy's like, you know what? I was thinking about. It. I can't believe I didn't pick up sooner. Like he was self-reflective about it. Whereas oh, I was more like, Mr. Ninety Seven fucked up real bad. I don't know if he's going to. No, be see, here. that's where you started. Like, you should have went. You're right. Where the yeah, fuck exactly. were you on that? Oh, you've been a mess. I'm glad you're off the booze. But we did. Like I wanted to thank uh, Leah. She emailed Karen, yeah. Dylan, Molly, Elliot, the Atkinsons, Nicholas, Chris, Ryan, Shannon, Cat, oh, there was Jasmine. A lot going to the junk folder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for yeah. uh, thank uh, for uh, celebrating episode four hundred. We mustn't have done 
that argument between you and I mustn't have scared off Karen because she, I think she's yeah, exactly. coming back in Ka- to drop yeah, some coffee. Oh, no, same, same, same Karen. Same she's Karen. coming back in. She's yeah. coming back and in. she you also... Should, hey, you should do a dummy fight. <laughs> <laughs> you should do a dummy fight. It's a full-blown... And, yeah. and just all stop and look and go, well, who's in the right, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. We she really, watches the show. Yeah, she's, you know, it would have been a good prank. We haven't really done pranks on the show no. other than Oh, no, I got you last week. Mate, I do... Yeah, it's Just to be clear, all the pranks have been on you. Yeah, exactly. Actually, it's my turn. That's why we don't but, do pranks on this show. Well, the thing is, I, w- I worry for you because I think that I'm the type of kid, like uh, when I was growing up, mm. pranks I would uh, I would take quite far. So I feel He's like the I'm the type. the kid that would hit you with the cricket bat when you, you should yeah. have just got poked. Oh, we've got it. someone at the doorbell. He'll, he'll, all right. He'll high, cut your brakes. High at the doorbell. Pranks on you, man. You've got no brakes. <laughs> Don't give me any ideas. Hi at the daily talk show.com. Someone's at the door. So yeah. better, maybe we've forgotten about someone sitting in. Maybe. Uh, I think so. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you, guys. Gemma, thank, thank you. Thank you, Gemma. We just got these. They Amazing. Smell, they smell delightful. I love natives. <laughs>